Lipscomb Bison's baseball is on the air. Good afternoon. This is Doc Allen coming to you live from beautiful Ken Dugan Field at Stephen Lee Marsh Stadium on the campus of Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee, as we get set to bring you college baseball action between Kennesaw State University and the homestanding Lipscomb Bisons. This is game two of a three-game series. The first game played last night. The Bisons won it in dramatic fashion with a walk-off hit, producing a 6-5 to five win in the bottom half of the 11th inning. The visiting Owls from Kennesaw State, also part of the Atlantic Sun Conference, they enter today's contest with a record of 10 wins and 6 losses, 3-1 and one in conference play on the 2021 season. The Bisons, from the Atlantic Sun Conference as well, have a season record of six wins, six losses, and are now 1-0 and in conference play. Earlier today, we had a chance to visit with Coach Jeff Forehand for his thoughts about last night's game and a preview of today's action. Coach Forehand, really exciting ball game last night. Club battled and battled and uh, went into extra innings. One of the keys, I thought, was Tyler Guilfoyle coming in and really shutting things down, three and a third innings of shutout ball. Talk a little bit about why Tyler's been so effective. Yeah, all of our relief guys yesterday, I think, were really effective. But yesterday, you know, he, he faced 10 batter or had 10 outs to get throughout the game. It's six strikeouts and, you know, just an impressive outing, you know, a lot more pitches than the closer typically throws. So he kept battling and battling for us and, you know, just getting us, we get three more outs, it gets us a chance to win the game and he did a great job with it. Tiger Borum is a true freshman who's coming here and really started to swing it at the plate. Had a big triple last weekend in the battle with Georgia, double RBI, double last night. Talk a little bit about Tiger and his contributions. Yeah, you know, it's not, uh, I'm not going to say it's surprising because he's a talented player, but uh, to come in and, 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 you know, number one, win the job, and now number two, contributing as much as he has been is, is just great, great bonus for our team. And, you know, he does a lot of things on the base pass. And like you said, I had a triple the other day and big double last night. So, again, doing some things in some ways that uh, I'm not going to say were unexpected, but, uh, you know, greatly uh, uh, warranted. And we want to keep him up, keep him doing that. Good luck today, Coach. Hey, thank you guys so much. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups. First for the visiting Owls from Kennesaw State. Leading off, second baseman, number 12, Jesse Sherrill. Batting second, the catcher, number 11, Tyler Polvey. Batting third, center fielder, number eight, Alex Carballo. Batting fourth, right fielder, number six, Terrence Norman. Batting fifth, designated hitter, number 23, Nick Hassan. Batting sixth, left fielder, number 42, Garrett Hodges. Batting seventh, shortstop, number two, Tyler Simon. Batting eighth, first baseman, number 40, Skylar McPhee. And batting ninth, third baseman, number four, Jake Coro. Earning the start on the mound today for the Owls, the right-hander, number 29, Luke Torbert. He's a junior who enters with a record of one win, one loss, and a 5.49 ERA on the season. The head coach for the Owls is Mike Sansing in his 30th season at Kennesaw State. He's assisted by Trey Fowler, Travis McClanahan, the athletic trainer is Chris Armstrobo, and the volunteer coach is Chase Suttoth. And now the starting lineup for the homestanding Lipscomb Bisons. Leading off, second baseman, number eight, Haddon Adams. Batting second, left fielder, number 55, Tiger Borum. Batting third, designated hitter, number 30, Chris Bashlor. Batting fourth, third baseman, number five, Carter Smith. Batting fifth, center fielder, number 19, Maddox Houghton. Batting sixth, the catcher, number one, Chaz Bertolani. Batting seventh, right fielder, number 13, David Graves. Batting eighth, first baseman, number 27, Hunter Gray. And batting ninth, shortstop, number two, Brian Moore. Starting on the mound today for the Bisons with a season's record of one win and one loss, an ERA of 3.18 is the junior left-hander, number 37, Max Habiger. The head coach for the Bisons is Jeff Forehand. He's in his 15th season as Bisons head coach. He's assisted by pitching coach Grayson Crawford, hitting coach Ryan Price, director of baseball operations Brian Ryman, and volunteer assistant Will Hoff. The Bisons team manager is Kyle Kossman, the head groundskeeper is Colby Rawls, and the head baseball athletic trainer is Clint Woods. The umpires for today's game, Butch Griffin will be behind the plate. Aaron Davis at first base, and Creel Waddell will be at third base. Our weather right now at Ken Dugan Field is a temperature of 61 degrees. We're under cloudless blue skies. 
The wind is blowing from the north northeast at about eight miles an hour. So the flag is showing a directional blow out towards right center field. Symmetric ballpark here at Ken Dugan Field. 330 down the foul lines, 375 to the power alleys, and 400 to straightaway center field. So you're all set with your lineups. Just to recap last night's activity, it was uh, an outstanding back and forth game with the teams attacking each other all throughout. And then scoreless innings beginning in the ninth, 10th, and in the 11th. The Bisons, as we mentioned, were able to tack on a run and walk off with a 6-5 win. Let's step aside now to hear our national anthem. Our national anthem is in the books, and we get set to kick off baseball activity here between Lipscomb and Kennesaw State. As we mentioned, the clubs played a tight one last night, a 6-5 to five walk off win for the Bisons in the bottom half of the 11th inning. Catcher Chaz Bertolani singling in a run from third base with no one out, and the Bisons were victorious in an entertaining ball game that's played here at Dugan Field. Outstanding starting pitching from the Kennesaw State side, Jake Rice, who went five and a third innings as a lefty really was outstanding on the mound and the Bison started with Ike Buxton who was also good on the mound and then as Coach Forehand mentioned in the interview the Bison's bullpen came in and pitched extraordinarily well giving up only one run over the subsequent six and a third innings Noah Thompson going two innings Tyler Drayback an inning and two thirds and Tyler Guilfoyle stretching out to three and a third innings giving up two hits no runs and as Coach Forehand mentioned six strikeouts so six of the ten outs from Guilfoyle recorded via strikeout and that enabled the Bisons to walk away with a one to nothing win over Kennesaw State. As we mentioned, the left-hander Max Habiger on the mound for the Bisons. This is his fourth appearance on the season. He does have that record of one win, one loss. He started two games so far, pitched 11 and a third innings, given up 10 hits, five runs, four of which have been earned, three walks, nine strikeouts. Opponents are batting 227 against the hard-throwing Habiger. Habiger will attack you with a four-seam fastball. He has a curve and a slider and a changeup. And uh, as we mentioned, he is a tall youngster, six foot six, two hundred and twelve pounds, out of Carmel, Indiana, at Carmel High School. So he creates some angles off the mound from that left-hand side and has pitched very effectively early in the season here for the Bisons. Beautiful day at the ballpark, as we mentioned. Not a cloud in the sky. Excellent crowd is gathering. If you're in the neighborhood, please come on out and join us. We would love to have you. Take in this one between Lipscomb and Kennesaw State. There are still some seats available. We are respecting COVID-19 protocols with some of our seats tied off, but there are still plenty of good seats available. So come on out to the ballpark and enjoy some outstanding college baseball action. These same two clubs will play tomorrow at 1 p.m. in the finale of this three-game series. First conference series for the Bisons. Second conference weekend for Kennesaw State. They started last weekend winning three games over North Alabama. And coming in today with a record of 3-1 and one in conference, the Bisons 1-0 and oh in the Atlantic Sun Conference. So we're ready to get started. Leading things off for the Owls will be second baseman Jesse Sherrill. The um, left uh, second baseman is batting at 318. He has no home runs and 10 RBIs on the season. And he'll stand in to face Max Habiger to get us started. And he takes a pitch down low. Ball one. Sherrill again, 318 on the season. He did have three hits and six trips last night in the uh, in the affair, and so he was on base several times. 
And he swing, go ahead, bunch one back to the mound. Hatterger's going to come off the mound. He's going to flip to first, and not in time. So Cheryl legs that out for an infield bunt single. It looked like that Hatterger was going to have a chance to make the play, but as he flipped to first, Cheryl got down the line with excellent speed, and so he's on now with nobody out, and that'll bring up the catcher, Tyler Tolve. Tolve in last night's action was two for six. And he comes in batting 281 on the season, two home runs and 13 RBIs. And Cheryl is certainly a threat to run. He's seven stolen bases and nine attempts on the season. And he's running on the first pitch. Here comes the throw from Bertolani, and it's not going to be in time. He's in there with a stolen base. So the Owls are putting pressure already on the Bisons as they have a runner in scoring position with nobody out. And... I didn't see the call on that pitch. I think it was called a ball downstairs. So it should be one ball and no strikes to Tolve. And it is indeed a ball. So one ball and no strikes on Tolve. Cheryl, your runner at second. Just underway here at Dugan Field. That's a fastball that's going to miss low and away. Two balls, no strikes. We'll set the Bisons defensively. We've got Borum in left. Maddox Houghton in center. David Graves in right. Carter Smith at third. Brian Moore at shortstop. Haddon Adams at second, and Hunter Gray in the lineup at first base today. Chaz Bertolani doing the catching. And on the mound, the junior left-hander, Max Habiger. He offers a bunt, bunts through it, and so that's going to be a strike. And we've got a correction on the scoreboard now. We've got the count of one ball and two strikes. So let's see if we can reconcile that with home plate umpire Butch Griffin. Haven't seen him flash that up quite yet, but we'll go with one and two. Nobody out, top of the first inning. Kennesaw State and Lipscomb just underway. And the one two is a curveball just off the plate, two and two. Outfield straight away in moderate depth, as we mentioned. The wind's blowing pretty steadily out towards right center field. Shortstop Brian Moore is swung over behind the closer to the second base bag, keeping the runner close there. Second baseman Haddon Adams over in the hole between first and second. And here comes the 2-2 from Habiger to Tolve. Curveball hit foul, and that'll keep the count at 2-2. Two two. We saw both of these clubs look to run last night. The Bisons totaled up six stolen bases, and the Owls had two stolen bases. Cheryl had one of those stolen bases last night. He's got another one here today. So both of these clubs like to put pressure on via the running game. And we saw... 13 hits from Kennesaw State and 10 hits from the Bisons last night. So both of these clubs swung it well on the Friday evening game. Here's 2-2 two -two pitch. That's hit into right center field. They're going to wave Cheryl around from third base, and he's going to come around and score the first run of the day. Big turn at first for Tolvey, but he's going to retreat. And Kennesaw State has jumped out to a 1-0 lead. So RBI single from Tolvey. And that's back-to-back -back hits in the inning, and that'll bring up Alex Carballo, the center fielder. Carballo is a senior He's hitting 351. He's got one home run and 12 RBIs. Last night he went two for four and had an RBI, scored a run. So back-to-back -back base hits to start things out for the Owls, and they're still in business with a runner at first and nobody out. That's hit on the ground towards first. Gray is over the fielder. He's going to retreat to the bag, and he's going to retire Carballo. Tolve will advance to second. So that's one down in the inning. and bring up the cleanup hitter Terrence Norman. Norman. The senior is batting 292 with three home runs and 19 RBIs. He had one hit in five trips last night. And he'll stand down with a runner in scoring position and one out. L Kennesaw State already up one to nothing here in the top half of the first inning. A little bit of shift in the infield defense now. Second baseman Haddon Adams is shifting more towards the bag, holding the runner. That swung on and hit foul out of play, nothing in one. We have to once again compliment groundskeeper Colby Rawls for the outstanding appearance of the field here. This We had a lot of rain in the Nashville area this week and obviously ice and snow just a couple of weeks ago. And he's got this field looking in magnificent condition, as is always the case. Here comes the 0-1 pitch, way outside with the fastball. The count evens at a ball and a strike. checks the runner, and he's going to see the 1-1 pitch to the plate. Curveball stays high, and that'll make it two balls and one strike on um, the right fielder, Terrence Norman. Norman is, again, a senior. Yeah. 
That's it in left field. It's a base hit. They're going to hold a runner at third. And so Carballo, or correct him, Norman is going to be on with a single. Colby goes all the way to third base. And again, three hits now in the inning for the Owls as they come in here swinging as we saw them last night. And so Norman is aboard at first. Colby is running at third, and that'll bring up the designated hitter, Nick Hassan. Hassan played last night and was 0 for 4 in the game. He comes in hitting 147 on the season. Five hits and 34 trips, no home runs, and four RBIs. And again, the Owls are threatening with runners on the corner and only one out here. So we saw them do this last night. The Owls put some pressure on in the first inning, weren't able to push across a run, did push across a run in the second. But they had a number of base runners in both of those innings, and they come out swinging today. And there's a bunt toward the mound. That's going to get the run home. Habiger's going to field it, go to first, almost pulls Gray off the bag, but they do record the out. But Colby will come in and score the second run of the day for Kennesaw State. And Hassan is retired via a 1-3 sacrifice. So Norman will go down to second, and that'll bring up left fielder Garrett Hodges. Hodges was three hits and five trips last night, had two RBIs and scored a run. So he also had an excellent night for the Owls last night. He comes in batting 281, four home runs and 13 RBIs. He bats now with two outs and a runner on at second. And he starts him with a breaking ball that hits in the dirt, and Bertolani blocks it up and keeps it in front, one ball, no strike. So in the inning, Cheryl started off with a single. He stole a base. Colby singled him in to score the first run. Carballo grounded out unassisted to third. Norman with a base hit to drive in a run. And, and Hassan, uh, or correct him, Norman had a base hit and reached. And then Hassan with the sacrifice scored the second run of the day for Kennesaw State. That's a breaking ball in there for a strike. One ball and one strike on Garrett Hodges. Shortstop Tyler Simon would be next if Hodges is able to extend the inning. You'll see the Bison's pitchers using that wristband. When they have a runner on at second base, they get the sign from the dugout, and so both pitcher and catcher with that wristband on. Here comes the pitch, and it's fouled back behind us, and that'll make the count a ball and two strikes on Garrett Hodges. Third baseman Carter Smith way over against the line, as is first baseman Hunter Gray. So big holes between third and second and between first and second as well. As the Bisons are taking away the, the corners of the field here. Here comes the 1-2 from Habiger. And he swings through a breaking pitch, strike three. So Habiger comes back with a big strikeout, but the Owls do strike for two runs. They get two runs on three hits. There were no Bison's errors. There was one man left on base. We've played a half an inning, and your score, Kennesaw State 2, Lipscomb coming to bat. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the bottom half of the first inning. Kennesaw State put two runs on the board in the top of the first, and the Bisons will send up Haddon Adams, Tiger Borum, and Chris Bachelor, the one, two, and three hitters. And I'm joined in the booth here by former Bison Cade Sorrells. Cade, great to see you. Cade was a first baseman, played here, and graduated in 2019. So a former uh, Bison baseball player living in the Nashville area now. But thanks for joining me in the booth, Cade. All right, so we'll start off with Haddon Adams. Haddon Adams at second base today. He had two hits and five trips last night, scored a run, had an RBI, and he awaits the first pitch from Luke Torbert, and he takes it outside for ball one. Adams comes in batting 311, 
One home run, six RBIs. He's the preseason Atlantic Sun Conference Player of the Year. He swings and hits this one high in the air behind home plate. Looks like there's going to be a play in the infield. Third baseman Coro comes over and catches it all the way almost at the first baseline for the first out of the inning. So Adams is retired on that pop-up that was caught by third baseman Coro headed toward the first baseline. And that'll bring up the left fielder Tiger Borum. Borum, the freshman, comes in batting 250. No home runs and two RBIs. Last night, as we mentioned, he had a big night. He was two hits and four trips, had a couple of RBIs, and this freshman has been off to an excellent start as we talked with Coach Forehand b before the game. He had a big triple in the Sunday game against Georgia last week, and he looks at a fastball off the outside part of the plate, one ball and no strikes. You know, something I really like about Tiger Borum right now is his approach to, uh, especially being as a freshman. Uh, obviously, we know that during that time right now, it's a, uh, it's a tough, tough transition from high school to big, college. Big, big jump from high school to college ball. He looked at a fastball on the outside corner. It's a ball and a strike, and here comes the 1-1. One, one. He hits it foul over a ball and two strikes. Yeah, it's uh, amazing to see a young man like him come in and get settled at the plate and also do some excellent things in the field because, as you mentioned, there's so much of a jump in the level of play. But he seems to have a, a maturity about him and a, uh, a comfort level that has uh, made him a valuable contributor right off the bat here. Here comes the 1-2. Swung on and tapped foul, and that'll keep the count a ball and two strikes. Defensively for the Owls, they've got Hodges in left, Carballo in center, Norman in right, Coro's at third, Simon at short, Cheryl at second, McPhee at first, and Tolvi behind the plate. And here comes the 1-2. Off-speed pitch stays high. And that'll be two balls and two strikes on Tiger Borum. Borum looks good speed, so he's always a threat to leg something out in the infield. And he swings through that one for strike three. So second out of the inning is recorded quickly by Torbert. And that'll bring up the designated hitter, Chris Bachelor. Bachelor was one for four in last night's game. And he's been off to a slower start for the season. Six hits and 35 trips. Does have two home runs and 10 RBIs. One of those home runs came, I believe, on Tuesday night in the Auburn game. So we know that Chris can swing it, and he'll get started here. And he looks at a fastball through there for strike one. You know, something I've really noticed throughout Kennesaw um, playing them and also yesterday is they like to challenge with the fastball. So he expecting a ton of fastballs coming through here. And I'm just interested to see as we go throughout the game whether or not they'll change that up with these two challenge three fastballs. Looked like that was the second one in a row, and Bachelor swung through it, and he's quickly in an 0-2 hole here. Again, base is empty, bottom half of the first inning, Kennesaw State leading 2-0. That's a breaking ball that's going to stay downstairs, and it'll be a ball and two strikes. Yeah, the Kennesaw Owls starter last night, Jake Rice, a lot of fastballs, as you mentioned, coming in from the left-hand side, really just coming right at the hitters and challenging them with that pitch. Here comes the 1-2, off speed. That's hit on the ground to third. Coro's going to field it with a step back, throw on to first. And just like that, the Bisons are retired, one, two, three. So nothing doing for the Bisons in the bottom half of the first inning. We'll head to the second. Your score, Kennesaw State 2 and Lipscomb nothing. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the top half of the second inning. Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb two to nothing, and we'll have the seven, eight, nine hitters, Simon, McPhee, and Coro out for the Owls. Facing Max Habiger, the Owls put up a two spot in the first inning courtesy of three hits. And so they'll go back to work against Max Habiger here in the top half of the second inning. And that's a 
Fastball, the catch is a low inside quarter, actually maybe a slider, and it's nothing in one. Simon squared around as if he were going to bunt and then pulled back. Saw several of that from the Kennesaw State Owls last night, a lot of them showing bunt early in the count. Third baseman Carter Smith back even with the bag. We'll see how they elect to play it here. He swings through a looks like an all-speed pitch for nothing in two. So Happiger really effective. Cade obviously got that live fastball, but when he can locate that breaking pitch, makes him that much more effective. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen uh, Max. I've been very impressed with him the past few years just coming and uh, developing his pitches, and uh, he seems to be doing a great job with Bison. So uh, I'm excited to see him as the season goes throughout and uh, wish him the best. That one missed downstairs, so it's a ball and two strikes on Tyler Simon. Bases empty, top of the second. Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb two to nothing. And the one two. That's a breaking ball that's going to miss inside, and so it's going to be two and two on Tyler Simon. Simon played last night and went 0 for 4, struck out a couple times, so he comes into today's action batting 255, one home run and nine RBIs. He's a junior. And here comes the 2 2. Swung on and hit back towards center field. Houghton coming in, but that's going to get down for a base hit. And so Simon is aboard with the fourth base hit on the day for the Owls as he taps that one out into center field. That'll bring up the first baseman, Skyler McPhee. McPhee is a sophomore, comes in batting 320 on the season, no home runs and two RBIs. He went one for five in last night's game. And we'll see how the Owls elect to play it here. Early in the first inning, we saw them use a sacrifice bunt or a safety squeeze actually to bring in a run from third. They did. Show some bun activity last night. As we said, they like to run on the base pass. Simon, who's running at first, is two steals and four attempts on the season. And we'll see how they opt to play it here. He's not bunning. He swings and fouls this one out of play. And that'll make the count no balls and one strike. The Bisons are one of the top teams in the country right now with double plays. So uh, with Max's sinker ball coming in, we'll look to see if we can get a double play coming in. Yeah, he seems to get some sinking action on that fastball, and I guess obviously like a lot of left-handers, it kind of tails away from the right-hand hitter, so he'll get a generate a lot of ground balls. Second baseman Adams has shifted over toward the bag at second, so they're playing him to pull, and that's catching the inside corner. Great location for that fastball, and quickly it's nothing in two on Skyler McPhee. So we'll see if they opt to put Simon in motion. Uh, he has one steal on the – or correction, two steals and four attempts, as we mentioned, on the season. comes the 0-2, and he swings through that for strike three. Uh, Bertolani lets it, it gets away from him a bit, and that will allow Simon to advance down to second. But the first out of the inning is recorded on a swinging strikeout, and that's the second strikeout for Habiger. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Jake Coro. So they get the runner advanced to second via the strikeout, and now with one out, it's Coro batting. Coro in third base today, 244 on the season, no home runs and five RBIs. In last night's affair, he was one hit in four trips. He did score a run. And he'll bat now with one out, and Simon running at second base. Top of the second inning, Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb two to nothing. And you know, breaking you know, ball stays high for ball one. You know, something I've noticed with Kennesaw this year is they have a very top-heavy uh, lefty hitting lineup. So that's going to be something interesting to see with uh, Max Habiger and their lefty coming up. We mentioned how the Owls like to run. They're 21 out of 29 on stolen bases as the season. That's going to get behind Bertolani, and that's going to allow Simon to get all the way to third base. So that's ball one. The count will even, or correction, the count will go to two balls and no strikes. And so now the Owls have a runner at third base with one out. Looked like a breaking ball that just stayed down and skipped behind him in the dirt there. And so it'll be a 2-0 count on the ninth-place hitter, Jack uh, Jake Coro. And the top of the order, Jesse Sherrill waiting on deck. Just shifted around a bit now. Appears to be blowing straight in from left field towards home plate. We mentioned that we we're expecting that wind with us most of the day today. Here comes the 2-0. Fastball's going to miss outside, and Habiger has fallen behind Coro 3-0. Be expecting that there's a good pitch in, in the zone right here for Coro to be swinging on 3-0. And the infield's back. We always call that the easiest RBI in baseball, right? That ground ball you can hit with the infield back and a runner on third base less than two outs. That's a strike right through there, three balls and one strike. So, Kate, as a, as a hitter in this situation, what's your approach? What are you trying to do at the plate? I'm not trying to do too much, um, especially with 3-1 right here, knowing mostly he's going to get a fastball, maybe a slider right here. And that's a slider for the inside part of the plate. Good call. It's 3-2 and two now. Knowing he's got a base open right here uh, would not be 
uh, surprised if he throws another slider right here, trying to get him to chase it. Um, but as a hitter, you know, you're trying to do, you know, your best job and, and just get him in play and see where the cards fall. Infield comes in now, interestingly enough, on the 3-2 count. The infielders have taken a couple steps. They're not on the grass, but a step or two behind. Here's the payoff. Just as you said, a slider hit on the ground towards second. That's going to get the run home, but they are going to retire the out. So Coro grounds out, but that gets Simon in with the third run of the day for the Kennesaw State Owls. And we go back to the top of the order and second baseman Jesse Sherrill. He started things out in that first inning when he singled, stole a base, and came around to score the first run of the day for the Owls. So Sherrill one for one on the day. And he's now four for seven on the weekend in this series. So he's enjoying the hitting in Nashville here. And Habiger starts him off with a fastball across the outside corner, and that'll be no balls and one strike. Yeah, that looked like a slider that he just stayed through and got enough of the bat on to get over to second. And again, even with the infield drawn in, that was an easy RBI for Jake Coro. Comes the 0-1, and that's a breaking ball that's going to miss outside. One ball and one strike. That's a big change of weather from yesterday, huh? <laughs> it was very chilly here last night. Uh, and the, when the sun went down, the wind was picked up. Uh, it did not feel like spring at all. It felt like early season baseball. That's missing outside, and that's going to make it two balls and one strike on Jesse Sherrill. The catcher, Tolvi, waits on deck if Sherrill is able to extend the inning. Two outs here, top of the second. Kennesaw State already on top, three to nothing, courtesy of four hits. And here's the 2-1, swung on and hit off his foot. That's going to sting, but that's going to even the count up at two balls and two strikes on Jesse Sherrill. As we mentioned, excellent ball game, though, last night with all of the cold weather. Both teams were swinging it well. They combined for 23 hits and 11 runs, and it was a dramatic affair that was not decided until the bottom of the 11th when the Bison walked it off with a base hit off the bat of catcher Chaz Bertolani for the 6-5 to five win. Here comes the 2-2 from Habiger. Just gets a piece of that. Looked like a slider on the outside part of the plate and spoiled it to stay alive, and the count will remain two balls and two strikes. And the 2-2 from Habiger, another breaking ball. Again, missed outside and low, and that'll load the count now for Sherrill. We mentioned he's an excellent base runner. He stole his eighth base on the season back when he got on in the first inning. So he's a guy that you'd like to keep off the base pass as you can. He can really run and knows how to run. Exactly. I think if uh, you're Max right here, you have to challenge him with the fastball. And he swings and hits. Or correction, that must have hit off of him. So hit by pitch is Sherrill, and he's on again for the second time today. So two outs and a runner at first for the catcher, Tyler Tolvey. Tolvey singled and was part of that big first inning. Uh, he actually drove in the first run of the day because Sherrill had advanced to second on the stolen base. So he's one for one with an RBI today. On the weekend, he's now three for seven. So he's also swung it well. He's batting, came in batting 281. Now got 14 RBIs on the season. So Sherrill running at first with good speed. Be expecting him to move pretty early in the count especially with two outs. He's being very active over there, but Lefty Habiger giving him a look and starts him off with a breaking ball that stays outside, so it's one ball and no strikes. Yeah, we saw last night a, a time or two where there was a first move steal that the Bisons employed, obviously with the left-hander on the mound for the Owls, and so I would expect for someone with Cheryl's speed, sometimes you might just see that first move steal where they're just committing to going. This time Habiger's going to chase him back. Um, always that unfair advantage that those left-handed pitchers have over there. Exactly, and I think um, Cheryl gets a 2-0, uh, maybe even 3-1. I think that's going to be some good hitter counts to run in. He's off and running here. It pitches inside, and the throw down is in time. Got him. Bertolani guns him down at second base. So excellent throw there. It was a tough pitch to handle low and inside, but Bertolani um, captures it and throws down to second for the third out of the inning. But the Owls do pick up another run. They have a hit. They don't strand anyone. We've played an inning and a half, and your new score, Kennesaw State 3 and Lipscomb 0. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
we head to the bottom half of the second inning. Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb three to nothing, and due up for the Bisons will be four, five, and six. Carter Smith, Maddox Houghton, and Chaz Bertolani. Carter Smith playing at third base today. Comes in batting 222 on the season, a homer and three RBIs. Carter was 0 for 3 last night, but did score a couple of runs. And he flashes bunt, pulls back, and takes strike one from Luke Torbert. So Smith, the senior transfer from Florida State, Fort Myers, Florida is home for him. He swings and hits this one towards first. McPhee's going to glove it and take it unassisted for the first out of the inning. So Carter Smith has retired three unassisted, and that'll bring up Maddox Houghton. Houghton with a big night last night, two for five. Two RBIs and scored a run, and that run that he scored was courtesy of his second home run for the year. He had a shot that went way out of here, Cade, uh, over the left field fence, and good to see Maddox swinging at back home runs in back-to-back -back games. Tuesday night against Auburn, he had a line shot straight out to the deepest part of the ballpark, so Maddox really coming around to swing it. Exactly. Maddox has had a real good approach, and I think he's just been missing a few balls that he usually hits. Um, and so I think uh, he's starting to see the ball a little bit better, and I'm, I'm excited to see him uh, progress throughout the season. He's another one of the Bison selected to the preseason Atlantic Sun all-conference team. He swung through a fastball there, nothing in one. And the second pitch is fouled out of play, and quickly he's down 0-2. Houghton, the 6-foot, 184-pound junior out of Dalton, Georgia. Again, off to an excellent start last year when the season was suspended. And as we mentioned, selected to that preseason Atlantic Sun all-conference team. So here comes the 0-2 to Maddox. And he swings through a slider, it looks like, for strike three. So second strikeout of the day for Torbert, and that'll bring up last night's hero, catcher Chaz Bertolani. We mentioned that Bertolani had just one hit in five trips, but it was a big one. He came on in the bottom of the 11th inning. There were runners on first and third. The infield was drawn in, and he took the first pitch he saw and hit it over the drawn-in infield out into center field for the walk-off win for the Bisons, and that earned him a shower and a celebration with his teammates there, and he looks at a fastball outside and high. Okay, that's got to be one of the fun moments of baseball when you're the guy that just got that hit and your teammates are coming after you. Exactly, and I think uh, Chaz enjoyed the moment, and I think uh, now they're locked back in, ready to, ready to get the uh, game, hopefully start it off into a good direction. He swings and fouls that one back to the screen. It's a ball and a strike. Yeah, it was probably uh, the temperature dipped into the low 40s, and somehow he had his shirt ripped off, but I don't think he was feeling the cold last night. When you got that big hit and you were the game-winning RBI, he, uh, he was feeling no cold weather despite being shirtless out there for a short period after that celebration. So Bertolani is ready for the 1-1 pitch from Luke Torbert. That's an off-speed pitch. Looks like the outside corner with the slider, a ball and two strikes. So Torbert's done a really good job so far. Been impressed with his being able to throw that slider on the outside pit part of the plate for strikes. Exactly. I think uh, if you're Chaz right here, you have to be looking for that slider and adjusting the fastball up. And he does get a fastball, it looks like, and he fouls it out of play. So that'll keep the count at one ball and two strikes. Right fielder David Graves waits on Jack if the Bisons are able to extend the inning. Again, we're playing in the bottom half of the second inning, and Kennesaw State is leading Lipscomb three to nothing. The Owls with two runs in the first and another one in the top of the second. And here comes the 1-2 pitch. That's a fastball that's going to stay inside, and that'll make it 2-2 two and two on the Bisons catcher with Chaz Bertolani. You know, I've been very, very impressed with Torbert this year. Um, I think he's got some good stuff. He's got a good breaking ball, but um, like I said, he's still challenging people with fastballs, and uh, I think that Lipson has to make that adjustment coming up in the next few minutes. Slider that stayed downstairs there, and that'll run the count full on Bertolani. So here comes the payoff from Torbert to Bertolani. And he swings through a slider on the outside part for strike three. So that's the third strikeout of the day for Torbert. Nothing doing again for the Bisons in the bottom half of the second. And we've played two complete innings. Your score, Kennesaw State three and Lipscomb zero. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
We head to the top half of the third inning. Kennesaw State is leading Lipscomb three to nothing. And to the plate will be Tyler Tolvey. He was batting in the second inning when Jesse Sherrill was thrown out on the base pass by catcher Chaz Bertolani for the third out of the inning. So Tolvey batting for the second time on the day. He's one for one with that RBI single back in the first inning. Three runs, four hits, no errors for the Kennesaw State Owls. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Lipscomb Bisons. And left-hander Max Habiger gets ready to start his third inning of work. And he starts him out with a fastball on the outside part of the plate. That's fouled back to the screen. Nothing and one on Tolvey. Tolvey again came in batting 281, two homers and 13 RBIs on the season. He's a sophomore, 6'2", 180 pounds out of Marietta, Georgia and Sprayberry High School. Doing the catching today for the Kennesaw State Owls. The 0-1 from Haviger. That's a breaking ball that stayed way inside. Almost hit him with that. So a ball and a strike on Tolvey. Again, outfield straight away and moderate depth. Infield in fairly normal positions. The first baseman, Gray, is close to the line and back deep. Expecting some full power from Tolvey here. Here comes the 1-1 from Haviger. That's a breaking ball hit toward Haddon Adams. Off his glove, out into right field. And the right fielder, David Graves, is going to come over and pick it up. So we'll see if they score that a base hit. I would tend to think that's going to be a base hit. Ball was hit well. Adams had to make a few steps to his left and leap for it. Kicked off the top of his glove, and that is indeed a base hit. And that will be the second hit on the day for Tyler Tolvey. And he'll run it first now for Alex Carbayo. Carbayo grounded out to the first baseman, Hunter Gray, back in that first inning. He does come in, though, batting 351, one homer and 12 RBIs on the season. And Cade Tolvey is three for three on the season in stolen bases, so again, a threat to run. Shows bunt, takes a slider on the outside part of the plate, nothing in one. Third baseman Carter Smith comes in a step or two at third base and throw goes over to first. And we will again have a no ball one strike pitch from Habiger to Carbio. He does bunt, bunts this one foul, and that'll make the count nothing and two. So that ought to change the strategy here. I would guess he's the bunt is no longer on as a no ball two strike count. Looks like the third baseman Carter Smith is going to take a step or two behind the bag at third now, so that defensive alignment will change. There is a bit of a shift on as well, Cade. We've got shortstop Brian Moore is playing to the first base side of the second base bag. Had an Adam shifted way over into the hole, so a, a, a fairly strong pull shift here on for Carbio with two strikes. Just off the plate there with the fastball. That'll make the count a ball and two strikes, so... Adams just missed, and that'll make it one and two. Again, three runs, five hits, and no errors for the Owls. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Bisons. We're playing here in the top half of the third inning, and we'll do a one-two pitch from Habiger to Carbayo. And he swings, hits this one deep down the line and down the right side. That's going to hook foul and go over the bullpen. So looks like he was sitting on a fastball there, and he hammered it pretty hard. So it'll be a ball and two strikes on Carbayo. Right fielder Norman waits on deck, and we'll see if they elect to put the runner in motion. Sometimes a running count with a ball and two strikes. Long hold from Habiger, and he's going to hold long enough to get called for time. That may have been one where they weren't planning to throw a pitch, Cade. What do you think? I think he's got a good hold right there. Um, I would be expecting a breaking ball right here, so be expecting possibly a run right here. Tolvey three out of three on stolen bases. He's not running, and it is a breaking ball. It just missed. It looked like home plate umpire Butch Griffin was about to put the arm up for that one, but he held up. Maybe just right around the plate. It was close. So it's two and two on Carbayo. And once again, we'll see if the Owls elect to put a runner in motion here. They're leading three to nothing here in the top half of the third inning. And threatening again. Five hits already on the day. Here comes the two-two. He's not running, and that's a breaking ball way outside. And that'll run the count full now at three and two. So, Cade, you were a first baseman in your time here at Lipscomb. You're holding that guy on and then uh, trying to get off the bag and cover some ground there, right? Exactly. I think, too, you have to be a little bit safe and uh, possibly stay closer to the line so that a ball does not get past you right here and uh, score the runner from first base. So 
uh, definitely has to be aware of that, especially with a dead pull hitter. Swung on and fouled out of play to the left side. That's going to make it over toward the Bison's bullpen, so the count will remain full at three and two. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess each time as a first baseman you come off that bag, it's not identical, right? you got to be thinking about who's swinging and what you're trying to do in terms of defensive coverage. Exactly, and the coaches are very good at uh, preparing people for games and, and having uh, sheets and um, cards showing – hitters tendencies and, and things like that so payoff pitch just missed outside with a breaking ball that was a slider that just was off the plate and so that'll be a walk and that'll advance Colby down to second and Carballo will be on at first and once again the Owls are putting pressure on the Bisons here runners at first and second and nobody out for the right fielder Terrence Norman Norman singled back in that first inning and so he's one for one on the day Max has to be very careful with Norman. Norman might be the Kennesaw State's best hitter, so um, he definitely has to be careful but has to attack him especially. Swung on and hit down the line, foul on third base side. That just got outside the line, and he looked like he was ready for that fastball there. As you mentioned, a dangerous hitter comes in batting 292, but three home runs and 19 RBIs. He's a solidly built youngster of 6'2 and 198 pounds, a senior out of Kennesaw, Georgia, so he's played a lot of baseball in his career here, and clearly knows how to handle the bat. So I would think with a guy like this batting cage, what's your thought? I mean, with nobody out, you'd love to advance those runners, but you also hate to take the bat out of a guy's hands like this with a bunch. Exactly, and especially knowing Kennesaw State, uh, playing with them for the past four years, uh, they are not a, guy, a team that likes to bunt a lot. So when you have a power hitter like this, I think they're going to take their chances of seeing what Norman can do at the plate. Here comes the 0-1 from Habiger. That's a breaking ball that stays outside. It's going to be a ball and a strike. So... Yeah, you, you just think that uh, with a guy swinging like this, uh, from the pitching standpoint, you'd love to get that rollover ground ball, maybe get two outs with the one swing of the bat, but hard to take the bat out of this guy's hands and ask him to bunt because he's a guy that can inflict some damage with one swing. Exactly, exactly. And I think, uh, too, knowing that um, Lipscomb is the top of the country in double plays, that is kind of what they are hoping for at the moment. That was a slider that missed downstairs, so it's two and one now. The count to Terrence Normer. The designated hitter, Nick Hassan, waits on deck. Top of the third inning, Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb 3 to nothing here and threatening again with runners at first and second and nobody out. And here's the 2-1 pitch. That's an off-speed pitch. Looked like maybe a change up there, Cade, that caught the corner in 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, and I think, too, right here, Max is uh, especially 2-2. Two two. He's trying not to give him something that he can hit. Uh, I think he's going to try to go backdoor slider if possible if he can command it. So two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Colvy running at second, Carballo running at first. And we await the 2-2 from Happiger. Runners are on the move, swung on and hit foul. So both runners were running on the pitch. Looks like they were expecting something off-speed, and I think that was an off-speed pitch, Cade, that he pulled foul. Like we said earlier, I think uh, Norman, he, he's got a pretty good uh, game plan against Max Habiger, and uh, they're just hoping that he can get one on the ground right here. So it's two balls and two strikes again with runners at first and second, and we'll see how the Bisons elect to attack the right fielder, Terrence Norman. Instead, he's going to do the inside move towards second, but no one was home. They're just trying to shorten that lead there for Tolvey after seeing him in motion on the previous pitch. Not holding the runner on at first. First baseman Gray playing behind the runner. And again, Adams, the second baseman, shading towards the bag. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two just off the corner of the plate. They asked down to first base umpire Aaron Davis, and he says no, he did not swing. That looked like a fastball there. And that'll run the count full. So three balls, two strikes to the dangerous Terrence Norman, the cleanup hitter for the Owls, batting with two men on, nobody out. Hassan, the designated hitter, awaits on deck. Looks like they're starting to do a little action out in the Bison's bullpen right now as Beerman is starting to warm up, seeing if Max can get, get us through this inning right here. Bullpen got a lot of work. The four guys he threw last night, runners are going, and that's hit deep in the air down left side. That's going to hook foul, though, and that's going to be a long and loud strike, too. So looked like he was sitting on a breaking ball there, and he hammered it foul. Once again, the runners were running on the pitch, so that's two times in this at-bat, Cade, that you've seen them start those runners uh, on the pitch. Yeah, exactly, and I think uh, Max has to start changing up his looks a little bit, changing up his tempo. I think uh, sometimes when you get focused in on the batter, you tend to uh, lose sight of that, and so they're starting to catch on that, and uh, they're starting to run. They're running again, 3-2, swung on and tapped foul down the third baseline. Smith's going to glove it in foul territory. So 
Norman doing a really good job extending the at-bat here. Just keeps fouling off pitches, fouling off pitches, and the more pitches he sees, I always feel deeper in the at-bat that that advantage goes to the hitter, right? He keeps seeing pitches, and sooner or later, it's easier to make a mistake. Exactly, and I think he's seen all three pitches. He's seen the fastball, he's seen the slider, and he's seen the changeup. So now he's just trying to get a pitch in his zone to drive it and uh, score the guy from second base. So it's a full count. Runners at first and second, and nobody out, and Habiger gets ready to come to the plate. He does do a long hold, and it's long enough that Tor Norman calls timeout. Just what you mentioned, Cade, of changing up that tempo, changing up the holds, and really causing them to freeze the runners a bit, because I think what you're trying to do is just get them off their toes, get them on their heels a little bit, and try to disrupt that timing. Exactly. If you get them in motion, that takes away the double play, and uh, that's something that gets Mr. McCoy back. Runners out. are not running, and he fouls that one off at the plate. That, again, looked like an off-speed pitch. He's come into him several times with that off-speed pitch. Trying to keep him out in front. He's fouled a couple off down the third baseline and now fouled that one. I believe that's four or five fouls in a row here for, for Norman. So he's doing a good job. Again, a guy that is a senior. He's played a lot of baseball, and he's having a great at-bat here against Max Haviger. Top half of the third inning, Lipscomb is trailing Kennesaw State 3 to nothing, and it's a 3-2 pitch from Haviger to Norman. Runners are going, swung on and hit in the air to right field. It's going to be right at the right fielder, Borum. He's going to field it and try to throw back to second, and not in time. So Borum had him played perfectly, and the Bisons are able to record the first out of the inning on a fly ball to right field off the bat of Norman. And that brings up designated hitter Nick Hassan. Hassan sacrificed uh, a run in back in the first inning with a safety squeeze, so 0 for 0 on the day. Again, he was 0 for 4 last night. And he bats now with one out and men, men on first and second. Correction on that play, that's Graves in right field today. Borum is over in left field, and so... We've got a correction on that. My apologies. Last night, Graves was in left for a while, and Borum was in right, but they've switched today for the defensive alignment. Pitching coach Grayson Crawford is headed out to the mound to talk to his left-hander, Max Habiger. As you mentioned, Dylan Bierman is warming down in the bullpen for the Bisons. I think this is mo no more than uh, just a kind of check-in to see how Max is feeling and also talking about the approach for Hassan right now. I think uh, they're trying to get that double play ball coming in and uh, try to get the momentum on their side. They would love to get a double play ball off the bat here and uh, get themselves out of this inning. So a couple of score updates of Atlantic Sun Conference teams in action. Liberty and VCU are tied one-to-one -one in the bottom of the sixth inning. Jacksonville State has is trailing Murray State 9-8 to eight in the bottom of the sixth. A future A-Sun Conference member, Jacksonville State, joining next season. Future A-Sun member Central Arkansas is leading Lamar 4-2 to two in the top of the seventh. Florida A&M has beaten Florida Gulf Coast 3-1 to one in a seven-inning game. They're playing another game later today, and Bellarmine is leading North Alabama 4 to nothing in the top of the seventh. Here comes the first pitch. That's swung on and grounded toward the hole in left side. They're going to wave the run around third. Oh, and it gets behind Borum. That's going to get all the way to the wall. That's going to get another run in, and that's going to allow Hassan to motor all the way over to third base. So two more runs in on the base hit compounded by the error in left field. So I believe that'll be a single for Hassan and then he'll advance all the way to third on the error on the Bison's left fielder. And Kate, that's one of those maxims of baseball that uh, errors in your outfield will definitely lead to run scoring. Exactly, and I think he just ended up taking his head off the ball uh, just a second too early, trying to get uh, his best throw off for the guy coming around second. I think it would have been a close play at the plate, uh, but as it stands, there's a runner at third with one out, and that's a off-speed pitch that's going to miss outside, ball one. This is Garrett Hodges, the left fielder. He was a strikeout victim back in the first inning, 0 for 1 on the day. He was 3 for 5 last night in the action between Lipscomb and Kennesaw State. Here comes the 1-0, and he swings through another breaking ball, and it's 1-1. One and one. I'd be expecting Max not to give Garrett Hodges much stuff to hit right here. Uh, I think he's got a base open with Beerman warming up in the pen, so I think they're going to be throwing that slider to him. I'd like a curveball, and he hit it foul just to the point that you were making. It's a ball and two strikes. Yeah, Hodges does have four home runs on the season, and that leads Kennesaw State for the home run leader. They have hit 12 as a team, and, and again, Hodges with four of those, so he's got a third of the team's home runs on the season, but he's down in the count of ball and two strikes to Max Habiger. 
There's one out. We're in the top of the third inning, and Kennesaw State has jumped out to a 5-0 lead. And that's a breaking ball in the dirt. Bertolani has to scoot over and pick it up. And it'll be 2-2 two and two on Garrett Hodges. The shortstop, Simon, waits on deck. And you have to think, Max or Cade, that this may be Max's last hitter if he's not able to retire this guy. Exactly. And I think if you're Max, too, you have to be careful with throwing too many sliders because you come into a new team and uh, Hodges starts looking for it. But it looks like they've got him out. He gets down on strikes for the second time today. So a big strike out there for Habiger, second out of the inning. And that'll bring up shortstop Tyler Simon. He singled and scored a run back in the second inning, and so he'll bat now with two outs and a runner on third base, and Bison's hoping to keep this one right where it is. Kennesaw State is up 5 to nothing here in the top of the third inning, and Simon bats with just two outs now. Habiger's already up at 68 pitches here through the first three innings. That's a fastball that's going to be inside for a ball, one ball, no strikes. Once again, the wind's picked back up. It's kind of blowing out hard towards right field now. We saw one get up in the air earlier and sort of hang up in the air where Graves got under it early this inning, but we do expect that wind to stay with us most of the day today. Here comes the 1-0 from Habiger, and looks like another off-speed pitch, and that's going to stay downstairs 2-0. Looks like he's having a little harder time locating the off-speed pitch this inning, Cade, one difference from the earlier innings. Exactly, and I think uh, if you're Lipscomb, you're going to have to hope that Habiger is uh, going to give you one maybe two more innings uh, if possible to try to keep the bullpen fresh for Here tomorrow. Comes the 2-0. It's a fastball misses way inside, and that mostly counts as three balls and no strikes on Tyler Simon. First baseman Skylar McPhee would be next if Simon is able to reach. Again, two runs in the first inning for the Owls, one run in last inning, and two more this inning. They've scored in every at-bat on the day, and they're leading Lipscomb 5 to nothing in the top of the third inning. Here comes the 3-0, and that's a strike right through there. Three balls and one strike. third is Nick Hassan, the designated hitter, and that's going to miss outside and away for ball four. So that'll put runners at the corners now with two outs for the first baseman, Skylar McPhee. McPhee was a strikeout victim back in the first inning. He's now one for six on the weekend, came in batting 320, though. He has no home runs and two RBIs. So looks like they're going to stick with Habiger to face McPhee. And nope, just as I say that, out comes Coach Jeff Forehand. So that's going to be all for Habiger. It looks like we're going to have a call to the bullpen. We'll step aside while we do. Again, our score, Kennesaw State 5, Lipscomb 0. We'll be back after a short break. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. New pitcher on for the Bisons is Dylan Bierman, the right-handed junior, 6'1", 205 pounds out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, in Johnson County Community College. Bierman comes in making his fifth appearance on the season. He's 0-2 on the season. He's pitched seven innings total. He's walked four, struck out eight, given up 13 hits. He did start the game against Auburn here on Tuesday night. So Bierman comes in to try to get this last out and hold things where they are. Again, your situation is Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb 5 to nothing. 
top of the third inning, and the Owls have runners at first and third. Hassan running at third, Simon the runner at first. And first baseman Skylar McPhee stands in there. He was a strikeout victim for Habiger back in the second inning. And Bierman starts him off with a breaking ball. That's going to be down in the dirt, and that's going to allow Simon to advance to second. So second and third now for the Owls with McPhee batting. Again, McPhee came in batting 320. No homers and two RBIs. He was one for five in last night's game. Sophomore playing over at first base today. And here comes the 1-0 from Bierman. That's right through there for a strike, a ball and a strike. So, Cade, what's the philosophy of Bierman coming in here? I think Bierman's got a really good uh, sinker-slider combo. So I think if you're, um, if you're Kennesaw, you have to be able to adjust to the slider. Um, he's got really good control. So um, look forward to that. Here comes the 1-1 from Bierman. And that does look like that's a sinker. It goes downstairs, and it'll be two balls and one strike. Nice play by Bertolani to keep it in front of him and keep that runner down at third base. So five runs, six hits, no errors for the Owls. No runs, no hits, and one error for the Bisons. Top of the third inning here at Lipscomb University. Again, the Bisons were a 6-5 to five walk-off winner last night, and they found themselves down here. That's another, looks like, sinker that goes downstairs. Bertolani again with a nice play to keep it in front. And it's three and one, and you see Bierman switching to the windup here with runners at second and third and two outs. Look, the third baseman Coro would be next if McPhee is able to extend the inning here. And if you're Bierman right here, be ready for a little slider as you got a base open. Yeah, it looks like exactly what he's throwing. An excellent pitch there. It was a three ball, two strike, or a three ball, one strike count. Now it's three and two. And so Bierman did exactly what you suggested, Cade, and got that slider in there and has run the count full. Same thing in this count, too, as you got a base open. Uh, I think that's a big adjustment through. And that one is going to be a call strike three. So maybe a little bit outside, but uh, I think Mr. Bierman is going to take it. So that's a third, exactly. a big strikeout. Bierman comes in and strikes out McPhee, and that strands two runners. The Owls have stranded three on the day, but they do pick up two more runs, and they extend their lead to five to nothing as we head to the home half of the third inning. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the home half of the third inning, and the Bisons will send up Graves, Gray, and Moore, the 7-8-9 hitters. And so far, they've had nothing doing against the right-hander, Luke Torbert. He's set the Bisons down in order twice with three strikeouts, so he's done an excellent job. David Graves will stand in there to start things off. Graves had one base hit in three trips last night. That was a double late in the game, so he'll try to get something going for the Bisons. We need to find some offense here get themselves back in this game. Torbert's done a good job so far mixing the fastball and the off-speed pitch and kept the Bisons at bay. He starts him off with a fastball. It's Torbert. That's going to be hard. Uh, him pounding the zone fastballs right now. Um, but do your best to work the count and uh, try to extend the innings a little bit any way that we can. That one missed high and inside, so it's a ball and a strike on David Graves. And the 1-1 is a slider that he swings through and a ball and two strikes. One thing that prevents you from extending those at-bats is when the guy's around the zone. And so far, Torbert has been around the zone. He's thrown a lot of pitches for strikes, exactly. including his breaking ball. So that keeps the innings moving forward. Here comes the 1-2 to Graves, way outside with a fastball there. That'll be two balls and two strikes. Again, Graves just missed a home run last night. He hit a double that went all the way down the left field line and bounced up against the wall to start a rally for the Bisons in the late innings. So he awaits the 2-2 from Torbert. And he swings through a slider there for strike three. So fourth strikeout on the day for Torbert, who's, again, thrown that off-speed pitch very effectively so far. 
And that'll bring up Hunter Gray. Gray, a true freshman, getting his second start on the season. He only had two at-bats, and so a man uh, out there for the first time today and only the third time in his entire Bison's career. He was a freshman out of Blue Ridge, Georgia, and he's going to look at what's a fastball through there for strike one. Gray, six foot tall, 211 pounds, solidly built youngster. Coach Forehand before the season telling us he can really handle the bat and is excited to see him develop. That looks like a fastball that catches the outside corner. So Torbert, tip your cap to him uh, here, Kate. He is really just finding those corners and working effectively both sides of the plate. Exactly. He's controlling the pace, especially. Um, you know, he's he's been able to really just command the zone. And, and I think that uh, if they keep doing this, this might be about a two-hour game. <laughs> He likes to work quickly. Here comes the one, two to Gray, and that's a slider that stayed high, two and two. So it looked like he fooled him, but it stayed high. And it's two balls, two strikes to Gray. Shortstop Brian Moore waiting on deck. Again, the Bisons without a hit yet here in the bottom of the third. Here comes the two, two. Swings and hits this over towards second, but the second baseman Cheryl is going to catch it as a little flare pop for the second out of the inning. So two outs quickly, and Brian Moore will come to the plate. The Bisons. Senior shortstop had one hit in four trips yesterday. He did score a run. Starting to swing the bat a little bit hotter here. He's up to 258 on the season. One home run and five RBIs. And has done an excellent job playing at shortstop, Kate, since Robbie Merced, the starting shortstop, has been forced out of action. Moore was playing at third, and now he's moved over to shortstop and really played very, very well defensively both last weekend at Georgia and throughout this week. Exactly, and I think Brian uh, has, has done a great job of, of being a utility player and being able to play wherever Coach Forehand needs him, and uh, he's showing his leadership on the field. Swung through that one, it's nothing in one, and he swings and fouls that one straight back, and quickly he's in the hole, no balls and two strikes. So leadoff hitter Adams would be next, but the Bisons need to extend the inning. Two quick outs here, and the right-hander Luke Torbert doing an excellent job for the Owls has not allowed a hit and struck out four on the day, and he's got more down in a no ball, two strike hole. Here comes the 0-2 slider, and he just got a piece of it and fouled it back. So staying alive there. And again, he's throwing that slider really effectively, Cade. And a lot of times he sort of do what I call a backdoor slider, starting it inside and running it on the inside part of the plate and giving us fits so far. Exactly. And I think uh, he, he's controlling the fastball good enough that he's making that slider look even better right now. Here comes the 0-2, and it's swung on and hit over the shortstop. Diving attempt from Simon, but that's going to be out in the left field for the base hit. So Brian Moore. Gets the Bison started with their first base hit of the day. Nice piece of hitting there with two strikes. Looks like he got a slider, and he just stayed with it and got enough of it to lift it over the shortstop, Simon. It looks like Torbert left it just a little bit too much over the plate, and uh, Brian was able to keep the bat through the zone and, and get it into the left field. So that brings up the Bison's leadoff hitter, Haddon Adams. Adams popped out to third base in the first inning. It was actually a pop-up that went straight over home plate, and the third baseman Coro came over and caught it, and there's a slider in there for a strike again. So it looks like Torbert's very confident throwing that slider in any count. He would throw it for a strike, and, and he's done so effectively so far today. It looks like he's uh, he's starting to lean a little bit more on that slider now that he's going through two times through the lineup. Uh, people are starting to kind of catch up to that fastball, so starting to rely a little bit more on that slider, and um, we'll see how he mixes it throughout the next few innings. Fastball missed off the plate there. It'll be a ball and a strike on Haddon Adams. Brian Moore running at first. He's three for three on stolen bases this year, and he likes to get that jump lead on his secondary, a very small primary lead, and then he'll jump out to a secondary, and Torbert's going to chase him back. Exactly. I think uh, right now, being down 5-0, I think you're playing face-to-face -face right now, and, uh, and if he gets one in the gap, maybe he can score, but uh, I don't expect Brian to be running anytime soon. It's a one ball, one strike pitch due, and again, it won't be made. They're going to go back to first because Moore did exactly that jump secondary lead that he likes to do, and it distracted Torbert and chased him back. So one ball, one strike, two outs, runner on at first, Lipscomb trailing five to nothing here in the bottom of the third inning. And the 1-1 is a slider that's going to miss low and away, and that'll be two balls and one strike, one of the few sliders he's missed with in this inning. Again, he struck out Graves to start the inning, and then Hunter Gray popped out to second base. Brian Moore reached on a single, the first Bison's hit of the day. And it'll be a 2-1 pitch due here to Adams. Swung and hit foul. Looks like a fastball that stayed inside, and he hammered it foul. 2-2. Two two. Haddon's just a good fastball hitter, Kate. He's a guy that if you throw the fastball enough times, he's going to find a way to get it on the barrel. Exactly, and I think uh, I think kind of saw starting to see that a little bit. That's why we saw the uh, first pitch slider, so... Uh, be looking for them to keep mixing pitches to Haddon and, and see, you know, what happens. Here comes the 2-2. Moore fakes a break, 
does not go, and that's a fastball that missed outside. So Hadner's worked the count full, doing just what you talked about, Kate, early in the inning, trying to extend these at-bats a little bit, make him work a little more, and he's got to a full count. So Moore should be running here, three balls, two strikes, two outs, and in fact, the first baseman, McPhee, takes a step or two behind him. Still not far enough away to avoid completely a pickoff, but he should be able to get a decent jump. And he's running. Here's the payoff, and he swings to a fastball, strike three. So that looked like a high and tight fastball, and Adams was not able to catch up to it. So that's the fifth, uh, correction, fourth strikeout of the day for Luke Torbert. And nothing doing for the Bisons here. They do get one base hit. They strand a first base runner of the day. We played three full innings in your score. Kennesaw State five and Lipscomb nothing. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the top of the fourth inning, five runs, six hits, no errors for Kennesaw State. No runs, one hit, one error for Lipscomb. And the Owls will send nine, one, and two to the plate. Coro, Cheryl, and Tolvey to face the right-hander Dylan Bierman. Bierman on in relief with the starter Max Habiger. He came on and got a punch out in the bottom of the third inning to end the Owls threat. They had runners that advanced to second and third. So big moment there and big out for Dylan Bierman, and he'll start off with Coro, who grounded out back in the second inning. Puts it right back up the middle. Moore had him played toward the middle, and he's going to flip to first for the out. So Moore had him played st almost straight up the middle there, Cade. Exactly, and uh, back to uh, the preparation that the coaches uh, talk about before games. Uh, looks like he was right where he was supposed to be and uh, was able to turn the team out. So that's one out in the inning, and that'll take us back to the top of the order and Jesse Sherrill. And Sherrill has already been a thorn in the side of the Bisons. He's been on base two times. He looks at a strike there. He singled and scored a, or stole a base and scored a run back in the first. Then he was hit by a pitch and caught stealing by a catcher, Chaz Bertolani, back in the second. So he's been on base twice and scored once. One for one on the day. And he looks at another fastball that goes downstairs, and that'll take the count to two balls and no strikes. I think if you're Lipscomb right here, you're looking for Beerman to extend uh, as long as he can go right here to try to keep the bullpen, like I said, as fresh as possible for uh, five more games from the bunt to the right side. An excellent bunt. Beerman's going to pick it up, flip to first, and got him. Outstanding play by Beerman there. He had to really keep after that ball. He got it in his glove and flipped it with his glove to the covering first baseman, Gray. And I guess, Kate, as a former first baseman, you appreciate Hunter Gray's got to make a read on that play, right? Once he knows the pitchers get it, he's got to bust back and cover the bag or else no one's home. Exactly. And that, that is probably one of the toughest plays in baseball, I would say, is, is uh, you just there's there's no too much uh, communication right there. Uh, you try to communicate as, pos as much as possible. And uh, I think uh, Bierman did a great job right there. Very athletic play from Bierman. And that's two outs in the inning. And that'll bring up the catcher, Tyler Tolvey. Tolvey singled and scored or, or drove in the first run for Kennesaw and then later scored. And so that was back in the first inning. And then he singled again and scored in the third. So he's two for two, two runs scored today. But he's batting now with the bases empty and two outs, top of the fourth inning. And Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb five to nothing. And that one misses downstairs and it's two and oh. If you're looking for Beerman right here, you're looking to throw it outside, outside, outside. Let him try to roll over something to the right side. Uh, Tolvey's a really good pull side hitter. So. Uh, be expecting something away, away, away. Here comes the 2-0, and he does throw it in the middle there, and that's popped up to the left side. It looks like the shortstop Brian Moore has got a bead on it. He retreats back into the outfield, and he's going to record the third out in an inning. So a first 1-2-3 inning of the day for the Bisons, and Dylan Bierman doing an excellent job holding things right where it is. We're in the middle of the fourth inning, and your score, Kennesaw State 5 and Lipscomb 0. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
We head to the home half of the fourth inning. The Bisons will send two, three, and four. Borum, Dashler, and Smith to the mound to face Luke Tolbert. Tolbert has been excellent through three innings. He's only allowed one hit, no runs. He's not walked anyone. He's struck out five and done a really nice job mixing pitches, throwing off speed, throwing that fastball. And Tiger Borum stands in there. He was a strikeout victim back in the first inning. 0 for 1 on the day after he went 2 for 4 last night with a couple of RBIs. So it would be nice to see Tiger get something started for the Bisons here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Looks like Torbett's going to keep challenging people with fastballs right here. And uh, especially uh, I learned very early in my career that especially as a freshman, uh, they're going to challenge you with as many fastballs as they can until you prove that you can hit the fastball. That one must have missed low and inside, and it's 2-0. and oh. Yeah, Kate, we were talking. So you played here for four years, but as a freshman, you mentioned your first start came for the Bisons when they played over at Georgia. That's, uh, that's a way to get your feet wet there. That's way inside. Did it hit him? Looks like it just avoided him, but it was almost inside enough to hit him. 3-0. and oh. So first start, SEC game, Georgia. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to college baseball, Mr. Shorrells. Exactly. And uh, the guy that we ended up facing that night was uh, Robert Power, which ended up being a second rounder throwing 97. So it was definitely a welcome to college baseball <laughs> from there. <laughs> I bet you still have some memories of that night. Here comes the 3 1 Deborah inside. Up, oh, they're going to get caught the corner, and that's going to run the count full. So, 3 and 2. Uh, heart rate, what, 160, 170 as you go up to bat when you're a freshman in that environment? Oh, yeah. It was definitely a, uh, it was a crazy time. And uh, all I can say is just enjoy the moment for all these guys. <laughs> it, it, it flies by. So, Good time. Uh, one day you're playing, and the next day you're working. So. <laughs> Borum works a walk, so he's on at first base with good speed. He's one for four on the season in stolen bases, but we know he can really run, and that'll bring up designated hitter Chris Batchelor. Chris grounded out back in the first inning, and so the Bison's seeing if they can get something going. He swings to a fastball there on the outside part of the plate, nothing in one. Talking about Borum's speed, I think uh, right now Coach Forehand is, is, is wanting them to kind of play base-to-base -base still. Uh, they're still down 5-0, so uh, we'll see what happens, but – yeah, the Bison only had two base runners, so you hate to run yourself out of anything here with uh, a chance to put a little bit more pressure on Torbert, who's been excellent so far. Borum not running. Swung on and hit over second base. That one's going to get down for a base hit, and just like that, Bisons are going to have runners at first and second, and huge turn from Borum there. Looks like he might have thought about going to third. I'm not sure if he was going to get there or not, but he made a big turn around second, then stumbled and fell. Yeah, it looks like he maybe took a wrong step on the bag and uh, caused him to lose his feet and and uh, so he just looked like he had to stay at second base right there. So Chris Batchelor has a base hit, and the Bisons have two men on for the first time in the day, and that brings up the third baseman, Carter Smith. He grounded out to first baseman McPhee back in the first inning, and now, Cade, do you start thinking about a little of that station-to-station -station baseball? Two guys on, nobody out, maybe move the guys over, or what do you think here? Five nothing, and we're in the fourth inning. You know, I think uh, I think Coach Forehand is going to give Carter the uh, – the option to bunt, and it looks like he popped one up to swung on and hit towards center field. And Carballo looks like he's camped on it. Borum is tagging, and he's going to try to advance to third. Here comes the throw; it's going to get in, and he's going to be there safely. So aggressive base running there from Tiger Borum, but he gets all the way to third base, tagging up and advancing on that pop out off the bat of Carter Smith. So excellent job there by Borum. That ball was not hit that deep, Cade, and Borum just showed really good speed. Exactly, and Coach Borhan preaches aggressive base running, and he wants uh, he wants our guys to uh, take the extra base when possible. So, uh, great job by Tiger Borum right there. That'll bring up the center fielder Maddox Houghton, a strikeout victim back in the second inning. But as we mentioned, he had a big game last night, two out of five, and one of those was a deep, deep home run way out of here in left center field. So, I'm sure the Owls will be pitching him carefully. The Bisons with runners on the corners, one out, bottom of the fourth inning, and Kennesaw State leading five to nothing. He starts him off with the balls hit off the edge of the bat. It's going to get past the first baseman, McPhee, into right field, and Borum's going to come around to score. Batchelor's going to keep motoring, and he's going to get all the way to third base. So Maddox hit that right off the end of the bat, almost like a cue ball on a, on a billiard table, but it went just past the first baseman, McPhee, and into right field. Exactly, and I think uh, going back to one of the hardest uh, plays in baseball, uh, a cue shot is definitely right up there with it with the funky spin. So uh, Maddox with the – lucky hit right there, but uh, I'm sure the Bisons will take that right now. That's about uh, 330 feet less than the ball he hit last night, but it's just as effective. He drives in the first Bisons run of the day, and again, the Bisons are in business. Runners on the corners with one out, and here comes last night's hero, Chaz Bertolani. 
The catcher with a walk-off base hit last night. He struck out back in the second inning here today. He bats with one out, and Houghton bluffs a steal, doesn't go, and he takes a ball inside. That looks like that might have been that slider. And one difference I'm seeing in this inning, Kate, is that Torbert is not throwing that slider quite as effectively for strikes as he was earlier. Exactly, and I think he has to kind of get back to what he was uh, doing best, and that was locate the fastball. The throw goes over to first, and Houghton is back easily. So Batchelor running at third, Houghton running at first with good speed, and catcher Chaz Bertolani stands in there. One ball, no strikes. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning, and Kennesaw State is out to a 5-1 to one lead over Lipscomb, but the Bisons are threatening here in the home half of the fourth. Swung on and hit towards center field. Carballo's coming in, still coming in, and it's going to drop for a base hit. Bachelor had to hold up, but he's going to score easily, and Houghton gets into second, and the Bisons have their second run of the day. Sometimes baseball, all you need is a little luck, and it seems that's what the Bisons are having right now with these two shots. Yeah, that one also looked like it went off the end of the bat, but it just cleared out into center field. It dropped in front of Carballo and dropped behind Simon, and so tough luck for the pitcher Torbert, who's been so excellent so far. He's not exactly finding barrels here, but the Bisons nonetheless have tacked two runs on, and it looks like that we're going to have a mound visit to talk about where things are. So RBI single for Bertolani, and to recap the inning, it started with a walk to Borum, and then Batchelor uh, batted him around. Uh, there was a single, and then uh, Borum took third on a, a uh, sacrifice fly, or not a sacrifice fly, correction, a, a fly ball off the bat of Carter Smith. Borum tagged and went to third. He scored then on a base hit by Maddox Houghton, and Chaz Bertolani just singled in another run. And so Maddox Houghton is standing at second, and Chaz Bertolani running at first. And up at the plate is David Graves, the senior right fielder, struck out back in the third inning. And he's batting here with a chance to extend the inning and do a bit more damage. It seems to never fail. It seems to, whenever you have a leadoff walk, about 80% of the time they end up scoring. Bad things happen, right? That's, uh, that's a, one of those truisms of baseball that you always see come back to bite you. Graves is going to take a slider over the outside part, nothing in one. So there's that slider that's been so tough throughout the early going here. He really located that well. Don't see any activity yet down in the Kennesaw bullpen. So they only used two pitchers last night. And so it looks like they want to stay with Torbert as far as they can go. And he's thrown very well. Again, both of the hits this inning are sort of off the end of the bat. Runners are running, and they've got him hung up between second and third. Houghton is in a rundown, and he is going to be tagged out. Meanwhile, Bertolani is going to stay at first. So good job there by Torbert. He started into his motion, but he wasn't far enough along to where he couldn't turn and spin and throw out Houghton, who had an early break. Exactly, and I think pitch forehand, uh, he can't be mad with that. He's, uh, he's always preached aggressive base running, and uh, it just ended up, you know, what got Kennesaw's favor, and uh, congrats to Torbert right there with a the great look, and uh, was able to get Maddox. So now Bertolani runs at first with two outs, and David Graves is facing a no ball and one strike count. And he swings through a slider there, and it looks like nothing in two. So Bertolani, no steals on the season. And I'm not going to say, Kate, that he runs like a catcher. He actually has pretty decent speed for anybody, but uh, I would be surprised to see the Bisons trying to swipe a bag here with two outs and down five to two. It's an 0-2 pitch due to David Graves. Torbick does a great job of uh, <coughs> getting to the plate quick, especially from first base. So uh, it's going to be a hard one. You're going to have to get a good jump if you're Chaz, but, uh, but I think to see him stay close to the bag right here. Yeah, you mentioned for a right-handed pitcher, Torbert really does get to the plate pretty quickly. So here comes the 1-2 to Graves. Slider on the outside part, and that's going to be strike three. Excellent pitch there executed by Torbert to put a stop to the Bisons' threat. But the Bisons do tack on a pair of runs. They get three hits. They do strand their second base runner of the day. And your new score at the end of the fourth inning, Kennesaw State 5 and Lipscomb 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
We head to the top half of the fifth inning, and the Kennesaw State Owls will send up three, four, and five, Carballo, Norman, and Hassan, to face the right-hander Dylan Bierman, who's working in his third inning of work. He pitched an inning and a third, no hits, no runs, hasn't walked anybody, and has one strikeout. And Cade Bierman's done exactly what you wanted him to do, come in and really keep this thing close for the Bison. Exactly, and I think he's done a great job. And uh, like I said, all they're doing is asking for him to uh, stay in there as long as he can. And uh, he's got a pretty tough task coming up with 3-4-5. That swung on and hit high in the air, but it's going to turn foul and get out of play, and that'll make a no ball, one strike count. Carbio is 0 for 1 on the day, grounded out back to the pitcher or correct from the first base in the first inning, and then he walked and scored a run in the third. So 0 for 1 on the day. He was 2 for 4 last night with an RBI. And we got Brian Moore just to the right of second base, and it looks like he played it well, uh, just like they had drew it up. And he's going to retire Carbio. Yeah, just as you said, that's probably a base hit if Moore's in his normal position. It hit right back over the bag, but he's able to throw him out on a 6 3 ground out. Exactly. So that'll bring up Terrence Norman. Norman is the right fielder. He singled back in the first, and then he flew out to right fielder David Graves in the third. So he's one for two on the day, and now he is two for seven on the weekend here in the series. But as you mentioned, a very dangerous hitter. A guy that's got three home runs and 19 RBIs coming in, and he looks at a slider that misses downstairs, one ball and no strikes. Dylan Bierman on in relief for Max Habiger. And again, he's done an excellent job holding things right where they are. Hasn't allowed a base hit yet. Here's the 1 0, swung on, and that's going to be foul down the left field line. It's hit over Smith's head. Thought I had put a jinx on in there, Cade, by talking about his pitching. But he, uh, just going to be a long strike, and it's going to be a ball and a strike on Terrence Norman. Again, Bierman comes in, and he's got that four seamer and a two seamer, but he also has a kind of a sinking action, a slider, and a changeup. So a lot of run on different pitchers, particularly away from these right handed hitters. Exactly, and that's why you see Carter Smith playing close to the line right here. He's, he's letting that sinker run into uh, Norman's hands and hoping that he rolls it over deep and gets shortstop or third baseman right here. Here's the 1-1, one, one and that's just off the plate inside. Two balls and one strike. Second baseman Adams is shaded way up the middle. He's only a couple of steps to the first base side of the bag at second. The shortstop Morris swung way into the hole, as you mentioned. So they're really playing Norman to pull here. Left fielder. Borum is also over toward the line, and he swings and hits this one in the air to center field. Houghton going back, still going back, going back towards the wall, and leaps up and catches it. What a play by Maddox Houghton. Another there. great catch by Maddox Houghton in center field. That ball was hit well to almost the deepest part of the ballpark, and Houghton turned, sprinted back there, and made a great play, Cade. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, Norman put a great swing on that slider right there, stayed through it, and uh, I think if the wind might have been blowing out a little bit more, he might have had that home run right there. Yeah, the wind helped on that one. The wind is blowing in, blowing toward the right field corner, and great play defensively by the fine junior center fielder Maddox Houghton, and two are out now for Nick Hassan, the designated hitter, batting with the bases empty, and that's going to be a fastball that's going to stay high. Hassan drove in the first run of the day, or correction, second run of the day for the Owls on a safety squeeze back in the first, and then he singled and is thrown out advancing in the third inning, and that's hit high in the air behind first base, and Hunter Gray is going to catch it there for the third out of the inning. So a 1-2-3 inning for Dylan Bierman, who is doing an outstanding job coming on in relief here. Nothing doing for the Owls. We're in the middle of the fifth inning, and your score, Kennesaw State 5 and Lipscomb 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the home half of the fifth inning. Five runs, six hits, no errors for Kennesaw State. Two runs, four hits, and one error for Lipscomb. 
And the Bisons will send up Gray Moore in the top of the order. Adams here to face Luke Torbert. He's gone all the way for the Owls. Four innings, four hits. He's given up two runs, both earned. He's walked one, but he struck out six, and he's pitched very effectively. Doc Allen here with you, and I'm joined by former Bison first baseman Cade Sorrells, a 2019 graduate who's back here catching a ball game at the ballpark today and pressed into service to do our color commentary. So we welcome Cade to our booth, and he'll help tell us about the Bottom of the fifth, and Gray's going to look at a fastball through there for strike one. Exactly. Uh, great to be here, and uh, especially with Gray uh, being a freshman right here, uh, he's definitely got a tough spot like you and I talked about. Looks like a fastball on the outside corner. Uh, it got caught. But uh, being a freshman, getting your first start in a conference game, that's definitely a tough task. He's down on the count 0-2, and, and here comes the 0-2, and he swings and taps it foul, and that'll keep the count at a ball and two strikes. So, yeah, excellent job that Torbert has done so far. We mentioned last inning that he's gone a little bit more heavily to a slider here, living a little bit more off that fastball earlier, but both have been very effective pitches to him. I think I've seen him mix in, mix in a change up here and there. Here comes the 0-2. That's going to be strike three. That's a nice slider in there for a call third strike. And so Gray is down on strikes for the first out of the inning. Brings up Brian Moore. Moore singled and was stranded back in the third. That's his only at-bat of the day. He's now two for five on the weekend in the series here. This Kennesaw State team, Cade, has, has been playing really well. They're off to a 10-6 and six start, 3-1 and one in the conference. They opened up taking three out of four from St. Louis University. And he looks at a slider that's gone high. And then lost to West Virginia, defeated Bryant, lost a Seesaw battle to Coastal Carolina, an excellent ball club. Uh, he played them on the road and lost 13-11. to 11, Then came back and s beat Georgia at Georgia 6-4. to four. That one's going to miss as well. And it'll be two balls and no strikes to Brian Moore. That was a midweek game. Um, correction, it was at Kennesaw, but they defeated Georgia 6-4 to four in that game. And then they took two out of three at UAB. And that one's going to miss as well. And it's going to be 3-0 and oh on Brian Moore. And then as we mentioned earlier, the Owls swept Bellarmine last weekend, defeating them 9-1, to 9-3, to and 17-8 to eight on Sunday. So this team has been playing well. Uh, Moore wicks make, uh, works a four-pitch walk to reach with one out. To your point, I think uh, Kennesaw is a very great hitting team. Uh, Trey Fowler has done a great job over there with his guys, and um, I think that um, they have a very veteran-heavy lineup, and, and, and it shows. And so they've, they've seemed to uh, be able to figure it out, and they've put up a lot of hits the first two games so far. They had 13 hits last night. They've got six more today. And Haddon Adams is standing in with a runner at first and one out. And, oh, they're going to get him. Yep, they're going to take him off. So Moore was leaning towards second, again, doing that jump lead that he likes to do. And he got caught flat-footed there. Excellent move from Torbert. you got to tip your hat to him, Kate. That was a terrific pickoff. Exactly, and I think it's one of those tough things. Uh, like I said, Coach Forehan preaches aggressive base running, and uh, it's just one of those hang with right there. So he's going to miss high for ball one against Adams. Yeah, Moore had a short lead. It wasn't that big a lead, but he likes to advance and do that secondary jump lead, and Torbert just caught him going the wrong way and, and picks off Brian Moore. So two are out, bases empty, and that miss is just off the plate with a fastball, and it's two balls, no strike. Haddon Adams is 0 for 2 on the day. He popped out back in the first and struck out swinging in the third. So Haddon is... Due to get on track here, he did have two hits and five trips last night. Swung on, hammers that one foul. He sat on that fastball and hit it hard and down the left field line foul. And the count will be two balls and one strike on Haddon Adams. I think if you're Haddon right here, you have to sit on a slider, uh, especially heading the count. He's been able to control the fastball really well, been able to control the slider. I think uh, I would not be surprised if he goes a slider away right here. He does just that, and Haddon is, ex Haddon is expecting it, but he hits it foul, and that'll make the count two balls and two strikes on the Bison's fine leadoff hitter, Haddon Adams, senior second baseman, back for his last go-around with the Bison's preseason Atlantic Sun Conference Player of the Year, voted prior to the start of the season. Here comes the 2-2, two -two, swings through that slider, and they just got a piece of it, so he's going to stay alive at 2-2. Two and two. That was a slider that caught a little more of the plate, but looked like it was really going down there, and Hadn't just got enough of it to stay alive. So it'll stay at two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases empty here, bottom half of the fifth inning. Kennesaw on top, five to two. Swung on and hit on the ground towards Simon at short. He's going to glove it, and he's going to throw on to first, and that's going to retire Haddon Adams. So it turns out to be a one, two, three inning for the Owls, and nothing doing for the Bisons in the home half of the fifth. Your score, Kennesaw five and Lipscomb two. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons baseball 
on YouTube Live. We're headed to the top half of the sixth inning. Kennesaw State is leading Lipscomb 5-2. to two. College baseball action here at Ken Dugan Field on the campus of Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. We're sure glad that you're with us here on our YouTube live broadcast. Doc Allen joined in the booth by former Bison first baseman Cade Sorrells. And, Cade, we get ready to watch the seven or six, seven, and eight hitters, Hodges, Simon, and McPhee, stand in there for Kennesaw. Hodges is 0 for 2 and has struck out twice on the day. He's batting here to start out the Sixth inning, swings, hits it on the ground toward Adams at second. He's going to glove it easily and flip over to first base. And just like that, one pitch and one out in the inning. Beerman's got that sinker going right now, and uh, he's done a great job as he's came in for relief from Max Hobbiger. And uh, he's been able to keep the Kennesaw State off balance and um, just continues to uh, do his job out of the pen. Two and two-thirds innings for Beerman. No hits, no runs. He has not walked anybody, and he struck out one. And batting with one out and the bases empty is Tyler Simon. And he looks at one that's downstairs for a ball. Simon singled and scored a run back in the second and then walked and was stranded in the third. So he's been on base twice, and he's one for one on the day. And here comes the 1-0 from Beerman. Swung on and hammered foul. That's going to get over the Bison's bullpen, and it will be strike one. So one ball and one strike to Tyler Simon. The shortstop today for the Kennesaw State Owls, a six-foot-tall, 157-pound junior out of Albany, Georgia, and tough at Lee County High School. That looked like a slider that stayed downstairs, and it'll be two balls and one strike on Simon. Once again, defensively, Borum in left field, Houghton in center, Graves in right, Smith at third, Moore at short, Adams at second, and Gray at first, and that's going to be hit into center field. It's going to be a base hit. So first base hit given up by Bierman. And that's going to put Tyler Simon on base with one out and bring up base first baseman Skylar McPhee. McPhee's 0 for 2, two strikeouts on the day. He was a strikeout victim of Bierman. He was the first batter that Bierman faced. He came on and wound up with runners on second and third and punched out McPhee for a big strikeout back in the third inning to keep this one within striking distance for the Bison. So he bats with a one out and a runner on at first base. Simon on the season is 2 for 4 in stolen bases. As we mentioned, Kennesaw State came in 22 out of 29 on steals for the season. They have had been thrown out once today. That's hit on the ground towards the shortstop. Moore's going to glove it, go to second. He's only going to have a play there, but nice play on both ends of that. That was not an easy chance, Cade. Moore having to come in, feel that, and then off-balance throw over to Haddon Adams. Exactly, and uh, Brian made a good decision right here, trying to get the uh, faster runner in the two out first and uh, give him a little bit of a better chance of not scoring. So that'll retire the second out of the inning, and the runner at first will be McPhee, and that'll bring up Jake Coro, the third baseman. He grounded out to Adam Adams back in the second and then grounded out to Brian Moore at shortstop back in the fourth. So he's 0 for 2 on the day. On the weekend, he's now 1 for 6, and he bats with two outs and a runner on at first. Dylan Bierman, again, working in his third inning of work for the Bison. He's done an excellent job here since he came on. He swings and hits that one foul. Looks like a slider that... He got a hold of and put on the barrel, but it's hit foul, and it'll be nothing and one on Coro. The top of the order, and Jesse Shero waits on deck, and I'm sure the Bisons would prefer to see him in the next inning with the bases empty, Kate. Exactly, and it uh, looks like we got Brian playing right behind second base and had him playing a little bit in the grass right now. So uh, heavy pull hitter again, and uh, Beerman with the sinker. Expect a rollover or some sort of hook ball to the right side. Here comes the 0-1 from Bierman, and it's a slider right on the outside part of the plate. Beautiful pitch there from Bierman, and quickly he's got Coro in a no-ball two-strike hole. So, yeah, big uh, big shift with, as you mentioned, uh, Moore pulled over in the hole, and second shortstop 
Moore pulled uh, toward, toward the bag, rather, and Adams pulled into the hole. Here comes the 0-2 pitch from Bierman, and swung on and hit toward third. Carter Smith, diving stop, gets up to his feet, throws first, and that's going to get past Gray, and they're going to wave Simon all the way to third. They are going to hold him there as Gray picks it up and throws home, and so that's going to put runners on second and third with two outs, and we'll see how they score that one. I think throw was a little bit low, but it, it skipped past the first baseman, Gray. I would have to think there's an error on that one somewhere. Looks like they gave the error to Carter Smith right there, but a uh, heck of a job for making a, a diving play right there. And uh, Hunter Gray was just not able to uh, pick that out of the dirt. So McPhee advances to third, Coros at second, and here is the top of the order And Jesse Sherrill, dangerous hitter, came in batting 318 on the day. He's got a single, he's been hit by a pitch, and then he grounded back to the pitcher. So he's officially one for two. And Bierman's going to go from the windup here with two outs and runners on second and third. And that's a slider that just missed low. One ball and no strikes on Sherrill. So outstanding play there. Uh, Coro hit that one off the end of the bat. Smith, a diving stop over to the left, hopped up to his feet and threw, but the ball skips past Gray at first base, and that allowed runners to advance to second and third. So two outs. Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb 5-2, to two, and we're in the sixth inning here. Swung on and hit foul down the left-hand side. That'll make the count a ball and a strike. Cheryl now four for eight on the weekend, so he's played well here in the series so far, doing exactly what you want for Kennesaw State. He's been on base two out of three times today, which is certainly what Coach Sansing would like to see. That's going to be a slider that's going to stay outside, and that'll make the count two balls and one strike on Jesse Cheryl. He's done exactly what a leadoff hitter should do, especially for Kennesaw State. He's been able to get on base and create some havoc on the base path, so... Uh, Props to him for being able to. And he's going to drive in two here. That's a single right back up the middle. They're going to wave both of those runs. The throw is going to get cut. And that's going to be run number six and seven. Jesse Sherrill, again, does the job with an RBI single and drives in two runs for the Owls. And they now extend their lead to seven to two. So the error comes back to hurt the Bisons there. You know, circling back to that error, I think um, when you're Hunter Gray right there, sometimes you have to weigh the risk versus reward of being able to uh, try to go for that pick or just trying to block it up. And I think he'll learn that as he gets older and, and, and matures in, in the spot. So um, just kind of one of those freshman moves and, and um, you know, he's doing what he is expected to do and that's try to pick the ball. But, um, you know, he'll learn as he gets older, like I said, um, and continues to get reps to make that play a little bit more uh, safe, I guess, so, so to speak. One ball, no strike to count on Toldy. He's batting with a runner on at first, and he swings and hits this one foul and out of play behind us. That'll be a ball and a strike. Toldy singled and scored a run back in the first. He singled and scored another run in the, s in the third and then popped out to the shortstop, Brian Moore, in the fourth inning. So two for three on the day and has scored two runs. And again, this Kennesaw State offense, give, you'll give them credit. They've put up seven runs on eight hits today, and they continue to put pressure on the Bison's pitchers, as they've scored now in four of the six at-bats that they've had. Here comes the 1-1. That's going to be a slider missing inside, and it'll be two balls and one strike. So, again, activity down in the Bison's bullpen. It looks like freshman right-hander Patrick Williams is throwing. There's somebody else throwing who I can't see from our vantage point, Dave, but we've got two folks throwing down there. If I had to guess, this might be Beerman's last outing um, for the inning. And he swings and hits that one foul, and it's two balls and two strikes. Yeah, Beerman, again, was the starting pitcher on Tuesday night. Pitched into the third inning, I believe, and uh, against Auburn, but he certainly had some work in, and so he's coming back on three days rest and done an excellent job coming out of the pen, keeping this within the striking distance for the Bisons. He's got a two-ball, two-strike count on Tyler Toldy. Jesse Sherrill is running at first, and there are two outs, and that's swung on and hit foul again. So totally doing a good job extending the at-bat. Speaking of an excellent job, I think um, the two two bullpen guys from yesterday did a really good job, Guilfoyle and the uh, Kennesaw State pitcher. Uh, they both came out of the pen and threw a lot of innings and a lot of pitches, so especially going deep into the game, um, you know, they did what they needed to do and, and try to keep the game close for them, but they did a great job. Here comes the 2-2, swung on and hit to Gray. Oh, it's going to be over his head at first base. That's going to get down the right field line. Graves is going to be able to cut it off. They're going to wave Cheryl all the way over to third, and so 
the Owls will have runners at first and third now with two outs as Cheryl motors all the way over to third on that base hit from Polsey. And, Kate, that was one that just got over the head. Gray, again, has got to hold that runner on, and as he comes off the bag, just not a lot he can do there. Exactly, and it's uh, just one of those hang with them plays, and uh, uh, maybe if he was about a foot or two taller, he <laughs> might have been able to catch it. He is a, uh, a pretty tall youngster, but uh, that one was over his head despite a, a good leap. He's six foot and 211 pounds. So first and third now, two outs, and center fielder Alex Carballo is going to bat. Looks like they're going to go to uh, somebody out of the pen right here. Does look like we're going to have a pitching change. Still have to tip your cap to Dylan Beerman. He's done an excellent job since he came on, but we will step aside with this break in the action. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Your score is Kennesaw State 7 and Lipscomb 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. The new Bisons pitcher is the sophomore right-hander Matthew Maldonado, a six-foot-tall, 204-pounder out of Seguin, Texas. Maldonado on in relief here. He is making his fourth appearance on the season. He's worked three and two-thirds innings, given up six hits, four runs, all earned, walked four and struck out four. Hard-throwing right-hander. Maldonado will come in with that four-seamer, also has a curve and a change. But he's a guy, Cade, that can run it up there in the mid-90s. We've seen him at 94, 95 miles an hour. So a power arm coming out of the pen. And he steps into a situation here with two outs and runners on the corner. Cheryl running at third, Polsey running at first, and Carballo batting bottom or top of the sixth inning and Kennesaw leading 7-2. to two. Exactly, and Maldonado's got a really heavy fastball, so it's going to be a good matchup between Carballo and, and Maldonado right here. Starts him out with a fastball, and he hits it in the air. It's going towards center field. Maddox Houghton coming on, still coming on, still coming on. He's camped out under it. And that's going to be the third. As we head to the home half of the sixth inning, your new score, Kennesaw State 7 and Lipscomb 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
head to the home half of the sixth inning. The Kennesaw State Owls have seven runs on nine hits, no errors. Lipscomb Bison's two runs on four hits and two errors. And Luke Torbert goes back out for another inning of work for Kennesaw State. He's worked five full innings, four hits, two runs, both earned, walked two but struck out seven, and has gone the distance for the Owls thus far. He'll be facing two, three, and four for the Bisons, Tiger Borum, Chris Bachelor, and Carter Smith here in the home half of the sixth inning. And the Bisons would like to start chipping away into this lead and maybe have a chance, Cade, to get in that bullpen because Torbert has been tough on them so far. Exactly, and I can't say enough to Torbert. He's done a great job keeping the hitters off balance, and uh, he's been able to really challenge people with these fastballs. And uh, Lipscomb has to do a better job of, of trying to extend the innings and, and really just work the count, get his pitch count up, and get him out of there. Swing and a miss on that first one, and Borum taps this one foul, and quickly he's in the hole, no balls and two strikes. Borum is a strikeout victim back in the first, and then he walked and scored a run back in the fourth. That was the only inning the Bisons have gotten on the board. They put up two that inning to close the gap, but the Owls answered with two more in the top of the sixth, and that's a slider just off the plate. Excellent pitch there, just missed, and it's a ball and two strikes. Again, the Owls have scored in four of their six at-bats, putting up runs in the first, second, third, and the sixth. The Bisons have only scored in that fourth inning and only have four hits on the day. Swung on and hit in the air toward the left side. Shortstop Simon is drifting back, still going back. He's under it, and that's going to be out number one for the inning. That'll bring up designated hitter Chris Bashler. Chris rounded out to third base in the first inning and then singled and ended up scoring a run in that fourth inning. So he's one for two on the day, and he's now two for six on the weekend for the Bisons' designated hitter. He's a redshirt junior out of Richmond Hill, Georgia, six foot tall, 198 pounds. He works at a slider off the plate there, and it'll be a ball and no strikes. Cade Chris is a guy you played with. He came here as a catcher and then converted to first base, and now has played some outfield and some DH, but he's uh, a guy who's been around here for a while. Exactly, and, and Chris is one of the uh, biggest leaders on the team, and he's been able to uh, really make a name for himself here at Lipscomb and, and has done a great job and, and continues to do a great job here. And uh, I look forward to seeing, you know, the good things that he does uh, throughout the next year. Takes a strike there, and the count will be two balls and one strike on Bachelor. One out, bottom of the sixth inning. He swings on a fastball off the plate there, and the count's two and two. So, again, tip your cap to Torbert. He's been around the zone, really has pitched effectively to both sides of the plate. Kind of has that backdoor slider that he's dropped in against righties. Here comes the 2-2, two -two and that is the slider. Hit back up the middle for a base hit. So, good piece of hitting there for Bachelor didn't try to do too much with that cage, stayed through it and hit it up the middle. Exactly, and I think that's the biggest key, especially when you get it to two strikes, is, is really trying to stay up the middle, not do too much, and really just, um, you know, I always like to say, get the ball in play and uh, kind of see where the cards fall. I think that's, that's you know, you then you kind of can control your outcome a little bit. Carter Smith is going to stand in there. He's third baseman for the Bisons today, and he's 0 for 2. He grounded out to the pitcher and has flied out to center field, so... He swings and hits this one down the line at first base. Diving attempt made by McPhee, but that's going to be foul for strike one. So Bachelor running at first does not have a stolen base on the season, and I think we would kindly say not known for the running game, Cade, as uh, part of his game, but still can surprise you from time to time moving around, uh, advancing himself. Exactly, but uh, right now I don't see, you know, I'm trying to uh, take any bases right now with, with the score being 7-2, getting later into the game. I think they're going to try to play uh, base to base and uh, and really try to just work the counts. Here's the 0-1. That's going to get down, I believe, in the gap in left center or no correction. Hudges is going to throw all the way over there and, and run that one down. So he had him played perfectly way over into left center field. I thought that was going to get down off the bat, but Hodges is going to glove it. So Smith hit it well, but he's going to be the second out of the inning for the Bisons. Carter Smith has had some pretty tough luck this whole year. Uh, it seems like everybody is playing him exactly to where they need to be, and he's hitting a lot of balls hard. You just have to keep hitting him. Put that one right on the barrel, but he's the second out of the inning. So Maddox Houghton will stand in there with two outs now, and Bachelor on at first. Maddox was a strikeout victim in the second, and then he singled and was caught stealing uh, between second and third back in the fourth inning. So one for two for Maddox on the day. He shows bunt, dunks it in front of the plate, and it's actually going to roll foul. And so clearly bunting for a base hit there with two outs, but with something we've seen Maddox do from time to time, Kate, he's got that good speed and is a good bunter and likes to drop it down and try to get on. Exactly. He's done a great job. He's uh, really perfected his craft in the bunting, and I think that uh, uh, typically you don't see many people bunt with two outs for base hits, but uh, Maddox is definitely one of those guys that moves in to try to take advantage of it. Again, big night for Maddox last night, two for five, and scored a couple runs and hit a long home run out of here, and I'm sure he'd love to get a hold of one here. 
He's waiting an 0-1 pitch from Torbert. Slider, right? Yeah, slider, I believe, and he swung through that one. It's going to be nothing in two. So, again, credit Torbert coming back and getting right into these zones whenever he has given up a base hit. The Bisons have five hits on the day, and I only have two runs to show for it. Torbert's gone all the way for the Owls, pitching here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Here comes the 0-2 to Houghton. Fastball is going to stay high, and that'll make it a ball and two strikes. Catcher Bertolani waits on deck if Houghton is able to extend the inning here. I think Matt would have to try to do exactly what Bash did right here and, and really just try to stay up through the middle. It looks like he's probably going to try to go slider down and away to get the chase. He does just that, and Maddox hits it on a line, but right at the third baseman Coro. So, again, tough luck of two of the Bison's hitters uh, this inning as both Smith and Houghton hit the ball solidly but have nothing to show for it. So the Bison strand another runner. They stranded three on the day. They come up with one hit, but they don't score. And we played six full innings, and your score, Kennesaw State 7 and Lipscomb 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. at the top half of the seventh inning. Kennesaw is leading Lipscomb 7-2, to two and right-hander Matthew Maldonado back out for his second inning of work for the Bisons. Third pitcher for the day, Max Habiger started. Dylan Bierman came in in the third inning, and Maldonado came in and retired the only man he faced, Alex Carbayo, with two guys on, two men on in the top of the six. So he's going to face 4-5-6, Norman, Hassan, and Hodges here in the top half of the seventh inning. He's flied out twice, so he's one for three on the day. And he'll stand in against the hard-throwing Matthew Maldonado, who starts him out there with a 91-mile-an-hour strike, nothing in one. Yeah, and Norman had a really good shot earlier in the game. Uh, Matt Cop made a great play on it. And uh, I think if I'm Maldonado right here, I'm going to keep challenging him with the fastball, even though Norman is a very good hitting fastball hitter. The 0-1 does challenge him with the fastball, and he hits that to right field. And that's going to head all the way back to the wall and gone. Home run. So opposite field home run there for Norman. It did look like a fastball. It was on the outside part of the plate, and he stayed through it and hit it just to the left of the scoreboard over the 375-foot sign in right center field. And Terrence Norman has extended the Kennesaw State lead to 8-2. to two. He's always been known to have that opposite field power, and, and I think he probably has the most power on Kennesaw baseball's team. So um, terrific swing by Norman right there. So that'll bring up the designated hitter, Nick Hassan. Hassan, safety squeeze for first run of the game for the Owls, or second run of the game, correction, back in the first inning. He then singled and was stranded in the third and popped out back in the fifth inning. So he's one for two on the day with a sacrifice, and he stands in there with the bases loaded, or correction, with the bases empty and nobody out. Top half of the seventh inning, Kennesaw State leading 8-2. to two. Matthew Maldonado on in relief here for the Bisons. Bit of activity down in the Bison's bullpen. It looks like Bryce Einstein is loosening, so we'll see how they elect to play it. There's a fastball on the inside corner, and it's a strike for nothing in two. Quickly, he's gotten ahead of Hassan here. And back to uh, Kennesaw's hitting. I think they've done a great job being able to have a really good approach. At Lipscomb, and, um, 13 hits yesterday, 10 hits today. Uh, it seems like they have their number right now. Yeah, tip your cap to the Owls. They've come in here and swung the bat well in both of these games. And as you mentioned, 13 hits last night and 10 today. Here comes the 1-2. Swung on and hit in the air towards left field. That's going to sh be shallow. Is Moore going to get back there? And he does. So Brian Moore gets back there and gloves that. 
Tough play there for Moore. He's backpedaling and going to where he has to turn his back to the infield. And so that was an excellent play by Brian Moore there to record the first out of the inning. So that, that'll bring up the left fielder, Garrett Hodges. Hodges struck out twice and grounded out, so he's 0 for 3 on the day. And he looks at a ball, one ball, no strikes. Swung on a hit on the ground towards Adams at second. He's going to glove it, and he'll go over to first, and that'll be the second out of the inning. So Maldonado gave up the leadoff home run, and now he gets two quick outs with Hassan and Hodges retired. And so that'll bring up the shortstop, Tyler Simon. Simon's had himself a fine day so far. He's got two singles, he scored a run, and he's also been on base with a walk. So he's been on base three straight times and really done a good job for the Owls here. Part of that attack that uh, we mentioned, Kate, he swung on and hit this one in the air towards the right side. Haddon Adams at second is going to be camped out under it, and he's going to glove it. So the Owls wind up scoring one run in the inning on the solo home run from Terrence Norman. They don't strand anyone, and we're in the middle of the seventh inning. As we go to the stretch, your new score, Kennesaw State 8 and Lipscomb 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the home half of the seventh inning. Kennesaw State is leading Lipscomb eight to two and due up for the Bison, six, seven, and eight. Bertolani, Graves, and Gray. They'll be facing Luke Torbert. He's gone all the way for the Owls. He's pitched six innings, given up five hits, two runs, two that are earned. He's walked two and he's struck out seven. He's currently at 89 pitches. And so, Cade, we're still pretty early in the season. It's unusual to see the starters go much past 100 pitches. And I'm sure the Bisons would love to have a chance at somebody else because Torbert has really been effective. Exactly. And I think he's done a great job uh, through these through the six innings so far that he's done. And I think uh, being at 89, now 90 pitches, uh, he's probably coming up on on probably his last inning, depending on how quick he gets through it. Bertolani looks at a strike and that'll even the count at one ball and one strike. Chaz is one for two on the day. He's got a single and he also struck out. So batting just for the third time. Again, the Bisons have not had a lot of offense today and that's going to be a slider missing downstairs or actually a fastball correction it's two balls and one strike on Chaz Bertolani again Bertolani comes in now two for seven on the weekend and he looks at that one just high and that's three and one one of the very few three ball counts that we've actually seen Torbert go to he's done a really good job Cade keeping his pitch count down and staying out of those three ball counts exactly and that's why he's been able to get so far into the count or so far into the inning Swung on and hit high in the air into left field. The left fielder Hodges is camped out under it. He's going to go into left center because the wind's going to push it over. But they're going to retire Chaz Bertolani as the first out of the inning. So that'll bring up the right fielder, David Graves. David's had a tough day so far, 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, one swinging and one call. He'll bat here with one out and the base is empty. Bottom of the seventh in Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb 8 to 2. The Owls jumped on the Bison's earlier today, two runs in the first inning, another one in the th second inning, and two more in the third inning. And so they got up five to nothing quickly. Loops can battle back and put a pair on in the fourth. And then Kennesaw added two in the sixth and one in the seventh. And so they have scored in five of their seven at-bats, putting up ten hits and eight runs. And David Graves looked at a ball high there, and it'll be one ball and no strikes on the senior right fielder, David Graves, getting the start today for the Bison's. Hits it on a line to third base, and he's going to be retired. So he hit that one right on the screws, as they say, Cade, but has not to show for it. 
Exactly, and I think uh, it looks like right now Kennesaw State still does not have anybody warming up in their pen or, or even getting loose. So we may see Torbett uh, continue to keep going past this inning right here. So the freshman first baseman, Hunter Gray, comes in. He's batting for the third time on the day. He's popped out to second and struck out, so 0 for 2. Getting his first start in conference play today, as we mentioned earlier, and he looks at a fastball right out there for a strike. One thing you've seen is Torbert's kept his velocity. He's been right around 89 or 90 with his fastball throughout, and so he uh, does not show signs of getting tired out there. Again, tip your cap to him. He's done an excellent job. That one misses low. It'll be a ball and a strike on Hunter Gray. Again, these same two teams are here tomorrow. It'll be a 1 p.m. Central time start for the third game of the series. Looks like that one misses high, and it's two balls and one strike on Gray. The A Sun's got a little bit of a change up on their schedule. It seems to be that uh, it seems to be that now teams are going to play each other six times in, in the conference. It's uh, definitely a, a different thing. But yeah, two divisions this year: North Division and South Division, with the COVID restrictions and trying to cut down on some of the travel. So these teams will see each other again. A three-game series in Atlanta later in the season. Gray looks at a fastball there, and that'll make the count full. Three balls and two strikes on Hunter Gray. Two outs, bases empty, home half of the seventh inning, and Kennesaw on top, eight to two. And he swings through that one, four strike three. So another one, two, three inning for Luke Torbert, and nothing doing for the Bisons here in the home half of the seventh. Your score after seven, Kennesaw State eight and Lipscomb two. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We're headed to the top half of the eighth inning. Kennesaw State is leading Lipscomb 8-2, to two, and Matthew Maldonado back on the mound for the Bisons. He'll face 8-9-1 and one for the Kennesaw State Owls. Skylar McPhee, Jake Coro in the top of the order, Jesse Sherrill. Again, Kennesaw State, eight runs, ten hits, no errors. Lipscomb, two runs, five hits, and two errors. And this one has been all about the consistent offense from the Owls today. They've done a good job scoring in five of their seven at-bats so far. So Maldonado's back out there for the Bisons to try to hold it where it is. He misses downstairs with a fastball. One ball, no strikes. We'll try to update you on some of the other A-Sun scores here through the course of this half inning. We'll start out by telling you that Liberty has beaten Virginia Commonwealth 3-2 to two today. Here's the 1-0, swung on and hit, base hit into right side. That was a nice piece of hitting there from McPhee. That one looked like it was off the plate, Cade, but he just reached out and tapped it into right field. Exactly, and he did a great job right there given, uh, doing what they had given to him right there. And uh, I think uh, they were playing a more up the middle pull side. So uh, did a great job of hitting it into the four hole, and it got him a nice single right there. That first base hit on the day for McPhee. He was 0 for 3 prior to that with two strikeouts and a fielder's choice. And it's Jake Coro's turn. Coro is... Grounded out twice and reached on an error. He did score a run after reaching on that error as Kennesaw State put up a pair back in the sixth inning. He bats now with nobody out and a runner on at first. And he takes a pitch just off the plate for ball one. McPhee on the season, one for one on stolen bases, but wouldn't think he'd be running here. Six-run lead in the eighth inning. You'd think that they're going to try to extend the inning a bit if they can from the Kennesaw State Owls side of things. Maldonado is ready to bring a 1-0 pitch to Coro. This is just off the plate. That was close, but that's going to be ball two. A couple of other scores from the A-Sun today. Florida A&M has defeated Florida Gulf Coast 3-1 to one in the first game of their doubleheader. In the second game, they're locked 3-3 three to three in the top of the fourth inning. Swung on and tapped into right field past the first baseman, Gray, and McPhee is going to stop at second. And so back-to-back -back base hits to start this inning as Coro singles. 
And once again, the Owls are doing what they've done all day and putting some pressure on these Bison's pitchers. Second hit of the inning and the 12th hit of the day. So we'll be back to the top of the order. And the second baseman, Jesse Sherrill. A couple of activity down in the Bison's bullpen. I'm seeing Wyatt Folsom on one side. I can't quite tell who's on the other side there, Cade. You can't see that part of the bullpen. But a couple of arms throwing down there. I think exactly. the Bisons want to keep this one right where it is. Exactly, and I think uh, if you're the Bisons right here, be expecting a bunt from Cheryl potentially. Um, even though you're up six, might be getting guys over. He's not bunting, and he looks at a slider in there for strike one. So busy day for Cheryl. He singled and scored a run back in the first, was hit by the pitch and caught stealing in the second, grounded out in the fourth, and then singled and was stranded in the sixth. So two for three on the day and been on base three times. So he... Leadoff hitter Jesse Sherrill. He's done exactly what a leadoff hitter needs to do for Kennesaw, being able to get on base. He takes that one off the plate, and the count evens at a ball and a strike. So, Cade, talk to me. Again, I'm here with former Bison first baseman Cade Sorrells. Cade, in this situation, the lead runner's at second. So, as a first baseman, are you playing behind that runner always at first base, or what's your thinking in terms of trying to hold him on? Uh, it really just depends on the game. I mean, obviously, right now, with it being 6-2, more than likely, uh, it shows that they aren't butting. Um, so definitely playing behind the, the runner at first base and, um, you know, potentially a back pick. But with the sc score being the way that it is, it's, it's probably not likely going to happen. But, uh, you know, really just trying to protect the line as much as you can um, and give yourself enough space to, to be able to react to any kind of ball that comes your way. Count remains one ball, one strike on the leadoff hitter, Jesse Sherrill. Again, got McPhee running at second, Coro running at first, swung on and hit foul, and that'll make the count a ball and two strikes on Sherrill. Yeah, you would think with the left-handed hitter as well here, chance to turn two if you can get a sharply hit ball, and I suppose as a first baseman playing behind that runner gives you a little bit more of an angle there that you can cut balls off. Exactly, and uh, Sherrill with the speed that he has, it's going to be really hard to turn a a double play, but uh, it, it's going to have to be a pretty hard hit ball for him to be able to get doubled up. So the count's a ball and two strikes on the Kennesaw State leadoff hitter, Jesse Sherrill. Matthew Maldonado is going to bring it to him, and he swings and hits it in the air to center field. Maddox Houghton takes a step back, now comes in, tagging at second, but not going is McPhee. And so Sherrill is retired for the first out of the inning. So big first out there for the Bisons. They could get out of this now with one swing of the bat and a double play ball. But Tyler Tolvey is up, and the catcher's had himself a fine day today. He's got three base hits and has scored two runs. He's also popped out once, so three for four on the day and two runs scored. On the weekend now, he's five for ten, so he has had himself a weekend to remember here, and seeing the ball well is Tyler Tolvey, the sophomore catcher from Marietta, Georgia, and out of Sprayberry High School, six foot two, 180 pounds, solidly built left-handed swing. And you mentioned earlier in the game, Kate, a lot of left-handed bats in the lineup for the Owls. That one's a fastball at 92, and it's going to be a s off the plate, one ball and no strikes. Exactly, and I think Kennesaw prides themselves in having, you know, left-handed hitters throughout the lineup, and, um, you know, they have a lot of experience, and it, it has shown they've had 13 hits yesterday and then 12 hits today, so. And like that's going to be the 13th one. hit. That's going to get over and into center field. They're going to wave the run around third. The throw's going to come over to third, and it's not going to be in time, and the Owls have tacked on their ninth run of the day. RBI single off the bat of Tyler Tolvey. Good piece of hitting there. He went the other way and really did a nice job. And that's three hits in the inning now for the Owls. And they've again tacked on another run. And again, as we talked earlier now, Cade, they've scored in six of their eight at-bats. That's a, that's a tough situation when you're continuing to score. It really puts a lot of pressure on the pitching staff and on your defense. Exactly. And I think Lipscomb uh, coming in tomorrow needs to reassess kind of where they're at as far as their – uh, pitching and see kind of what what Kennesaw has done, you know what they've what they've uh, you know taken advantage of, and really uh, focus on 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 the the negatives. Slider misses downstairs. It's a ball and no strikes. Alex Carbio is the hitter. Carbio has been on base one time today via a walk. Otherwise, he's grounded out twice and flied out once. So he's 0 for three in a walk. He did score a run when he walked. Runners at the corners, first and third, one out, top of the eighth inning. Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb 9-2, to two, and he swings and fouls that one off at the plate. Runner from first was trying to advance because he thought it was down in the dirt, but it caught a piece of the bat, and so we'll come back and do a 1-1 one, one, one count. A couple of other scores on A-Sun teams. Bellarmine has beaten North Alabama 5-1. to one. 
Central Florida is leading Jacksonville 11 to 6 in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Florida International in Stetson has been postponed due to inclement weather. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Swung on and tapped towards first. Gray's going to feel it. It's going to be off his glove, and they're going to get an out. Haven't seen a signal yet. They called him safe. So Gray tried to feel that one. It kicked off his glove, Cade, and then he tried to reach out and tag Carbayo coming by, and he was unable to reach him. And looks like Coach Forehand, I can't tell if he's going to go out to ask about the call. Looks like we're going to have a conference here among our umpires. So what did you see, Cade, on that one? It looks like he was able to get back to the line and be able to tag him. Um, obviously, it was probably a pretty tough pretty tough look, especially with Maldonado right there in the area as well. So looks like they're chatting about it to see if they change their decision and call him out. They did call him out, so he was able to tag him. I thought he got him as he came by. Either way, the run scores from third, Coro. Tolvi is going to advance down to second, but that is the second out of the inning, and so that will go down as a three unassisted ground out on Carbayo. And now Coach Mike Sansing is going to come out and ask for some explanation as well. So an odd-looking play. The ball was just off the end of the bat. It came to Gray at first base. He looked like he was going to field it easily. It kicked off his glove. He had to pick it up, and he dove out and tried to catch the runner as he was coming by. It was really the only play he had. Exactly. And, and, and I think, you know, it could possibly be the nerves of, of first start and, and all those things. But uh, he just has to keep learning, and he's, he's going to do, you know, great things while he's here at Lipscomb. But uh, – it's definitely interesting right now seeing uh, coaches can't go out there and discuss with umpires. They have to stay at the line. That's definitely a very interesting thing. I'm sure the umpires would enjoy keeping that part of the COVID <laughs> protocol once we get past this season, but uh, we'll probably see how they so. go. So there's two outs now. Runners at second base. That's Tyler Tolvey and Terrence Norman, the dangerous leadoff hit or c correction, the dangerous cleanup hitter is at the plate. And Maldonado has him swing through a slider for no balls and one strike. Nolan has two hits on the day, and one of them went over the wall, a Norman correction. He had a single back in the first. He homered in the seventh, and he's flied out a couple times. So he's hit the ball in the air pretty consistently. Last time he was up, he hit that opposite field home run that got out over the scoreboard, and that was off Maldonado. So he bats with two outs and a runner at second, and he fouls that one off. Looked like a slider as well. So you Maldonado know. staying with the off-speed stuff after I believe he hit the fastball out last time. Yep, you know, we, uh, we talked about him trying to challenge Norman with the fastball, and it seems to – that he's learned from that and uh, is really trying to focus on that slider to Norman now. So no balls, two strikes. Tolby running at second. Again, two more runs in this inning for Kennesaw. They've scored in six of their eight at-bats, and here comes the 0-2. That's a fastball high at 91. So and it'll be a ball and two strikes. That's really to set him up for this slider that's probably going to be coming in the next pitch or so. So uh, I expect Norman to be sitting on it and uh, see kind of what happens. Again, if you're just joining us, I'm joined in the booth today by Cade Sorrells, the fine Bison's first baseman who graduated here in 2019. He's at the ballpark today, and he's offering us the insights that a former player can. That's fouled off out of play to the right side, and we're blessed because Cade's played against some of these guys. He's played with some of the ones that are still out there on the Bison side and certainly played against these Kennesaw State Owls through your four years here at Lipscomb. So great to have your insights. We appreciate you being in the booth with us today and adding your, your perspective here as a former player. Absolutely, and uh, I enjoy watching these guys, and I enjoy watching um, you know guys I've played with and guys I've competed against. That swung on and hit back up the middle. Haddon Adams is going to glove it. He's going to drop it, and they're going to wave the runner home from third. And now the throw is going to come home, and he's going to slide in there safe. So good piece of base running there from Tolvi. He never really hesitated. There were two outs. The ball kicked off of Adams' glove. I think that's probably going to go as a base hit uh, because he – had to range way behind the bag at second. It would have been a very tough chance because Norman runs fairly well, and they do indeed give that a base hit. So Norman has driven in another run, and he has his third hit of the day. It looks like they actually just changed it to an error. Did they? Wow. Okay, that's a tough error to get there, I'd have to say, because that was a tough, tough play, I thought. I thought that was going to be a bang-bang play no matter what happened. But either way, Norman is on at first, and a swing and a miss for Hassan. That's 11 runs now for the Kennesaw State Owls, and Hassan has had a safety squeeze for an RBI. He's singled, and he's flied out and popped out. So he's one for three on the day, does have an RBI. He swings and hits a base hit into left field. That's going to get down, and that'll be the 14th hit of the day, and Terrence Norman is going to stop at second. And so these Kennesaw State hitters continue to sit fastball and continue to deliver a solid performance out of the box here. 15 hits now on the day and 11 runs, and Exactly. There are, there are two outs, and that brings up Garrett Hodges. Exactly, and I think that uh, right now with this Kennesaw State, hitting, their hitting is, uh, is, is doing very well. So, um, 
you know, props to them. And, and um, you know, the Bisons are going to have to fight through this game and then really try to, uh, I think, focus on trying to uh, end on a high note if possible and, uh, and get ready for tomorrow. That one missed inside. One ball, no strikes on Garrett Hodges. Hodges has been a strikeout victim in the first and the third, and he's grounded out twice. So he's 0 for 4 today, one of the few guys in the lineup for Kennesaw State without a base hit. He bats with two on, two out. That's a slider down low, and it's going to miss, and it'll be two balls and no strikes. Again, 11 runs on 15 hits for Kennesaw State. That's after they put up 13 hits last night. They only mustered five runs on those hits last night. And they left 12 men on base last night. That was really the story of the game, is being unable to get that timely hit. But here comes the 2-0. That's, I guess that missed downstairs. Like ball three. So three balls and no strikes. And again, the Kennesaw State Owls have really put a lot of pressure on scoring in every inning other than the fourth and fifth inning. Just putting a crooked number up there this inning as well. Here comes the 3-0 pitch. That's right through there for a strike. Three balls and one strike on Hodges. Shortstop Simon waits on deck if Hodges is able to reach and extend the inning. Kate, I don't really see much activity down in the Bison's bullpen. It looks like they're going to ask Maldonado to try to finish this one, get through this inning at least here. Exactly. I think uh, they're they're trying to hopefully get him to extend into the next inning. That swung on and hit down the left field line. Borum going back, still going back, going back and can't get there. That's going to drop inside the line. That's going to score at least two. They're going to wave uh, the second runner around, and he's going to get there. And a uh, tough chance there. Borum had a long run. That ball just hit down just inside the line on left field. I actually thought it was going to slice foul. It looked like it was fair by about a foot, but it was clearly a fair ball, and that's a double off the bat of Hodges. And he indeed has his first, at or first hit of the day and now has two RBIs to go along with it. And Kennesaw State has extended their lead to 13-2. to two. And we're the ninth man in the inning, which is Tyler Simon, the shortstop. So funny-looking swing, went off the edge of the bat, looked like a fastball on the outside part, but he got enough to get it down there. Exactly, and I know uh, Garrett is a predominantly pull hitter, and so Tybee was definitely playing the left center gap, and uh, that ball just had eyes and, and was able to stay in, inside of the foul territory and, and, and really get him a double. That's a slider that missed off the plate, so it's a ball and no strikes to Tyler Simon. Simon has two base hits, a walk, and a pop-out today, so he's two for three on the day. Here comes the 1-0. Swung on, excuse me, check swing, and he fouls it out of play, and so it'll be a ball and a strike. Again, this is the ninth man to bat in the inning. The Owls are about to bat around here. And it's been a the story of the day has been all Kennesaw State. They have really come out here and done what they have to do in the batter's box, putting a lot of pressure on throughout the day. 16 hits on the day for Kennesaw State. Here comes the 1-1. Swung on and hit down the right side. That's going to be foul, and that'll make the count a ball and two strikes. A couple other score updates on some area teams. Tennessee Martin has beaten Eastern Kentucky 7-3. to Jacksonville State beat Murray State 16-11 to in a slugfest. Belmont has beaten SIU Edwardsville 2-1. to Austin P is leading Southeast Missouri State 5-1 to in the top of the ninth, and Tennessee Martin and Eastern Kentucky are tied at one in the bottom of the seventh. That's a slider that's going to miss downstairs, and that'll make the count two and two on Simon. Some other games coming on later today. Jacksonville State and Murray State will be playing. Austin P plays another one with Southeast Missouri State. Here comes the 2-2, just off the plate with that slider, and the count's going to run full now. So Simon's worked the count full, 3-2, and two, two outs, runner at second. Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb 13-2, to two, and it is in the top of the eighth inning. A couple of other scores. We mentioned earlier Florida A&M beating Florida Gulf Coast 3-1 to one in game one. They are playing a second game there. It's 3-3 three to three in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the payoff. Swung on and hit in the air to right field. Graves takes a couple steps back and gloves it for the third out of the inning. But it's a productive inning for the Owls. They tack on five more runs, and they are now leading Lipscomb 13-2 to two as we head to the home half of the eighth inning. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
We head to the home half of the eighth inning. Kennesaw State is all over Lipscomb, 13-2 to two here in baseball action. Second game of a three-game series. The Bisons won 6-5 to five in extra innings last night, but this one has been all Kennesaw State. And we do have a new pitcher on the mound for the Kennesaw State Owls. He is the so graduate transfer, Anthony Rodriguez. Six foot one, 195 pound graduate transfer. His home is Miramar, Florida. He played at Maryville College. He's making his fifth appearance on the season. He's worked five and two thirds innings, given up seven hits, five runs, four earned, walked five, and struck out seven. Opposing batters are batting 304 against him. And he's going to face nine, one, and two for the Bison, starting with Brian Moore. And Moore looks at a strike to get things started in the bottom half of the eighth inning. So Luke Torbert went a full seven innings and pitched very effectively, giving up only two runs and five hits. Here comes the 1-0 to Moore. He looks at a fastball at 90. That's going to be on there for a strike. Brian batting just for the third time today. He has singled and walked. Again, a lot of efficient innings, a lot of 1-2-3 two, innings out of this pitching staff for Kennesaw State. And so the Bisons have really not turned the lineup over much. That's swung on on an off-speed slider and looks like it's not going to be tagged. And they're going to throw to first. And are they saying that he fouled that? I guess apparently he did not. So Moore is going to be down on strikes. Drop a third strike, and he's thrown out down to first base, and that'll turn us back to the top of the order in Haddon Adams. Haddon is batting just for the fourth time today. Popped out back in the first inning, struck out swinging in the third, and grounded out in the fifth. So a quiet day for the Bison's leadoff hitter. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Looks at a fastball low and inside, and that'll be ball one. So we mentioned this is just the second Kennesaw State pitcher that we've seen today. Cade, and one of the things you mentioned, these teams will actually play each other a total of six times this year between the three-game series here and a three-game series later. And talk to us about the use of the bullpen and seeing those arms. Exactly. I think that's a, uh, a big thing, and, and Torbett has done a great job, and, and he was able to, you know, extend as long as he could because, you know, when you face somebody six times, you know, you're going to see a continuing re repetition of the same pitchers over and over and over. So... Uh, great job by Kennesaw State to be able to throw, you know, hopefully only two pitchers for them and, and so that they can keep those people in the pen and really, um, you know, not become monotonous of seeing those same people over and over and over and get the idea and the tendencies of, you know, their pitchers. Count goes to two and two as that breaking ball bounced up there. It's two and two on Haddon Adams. And he swings through an off-speed pitch there. So really nice job for Rodriguez and quickly there are two down for the Bisons here in the bottom half of the eighth inning and that'll bring up Tiger Borum. Tiger was a strikeout victim in the first. He walked and scored a run in the fourth and then popped out in the sixth inning. So he's 0 for 2 on the day. Has scored a run when he reached on that walk. And he bats now with two outs and the bases empty in the home half of the eighth inning. That's a fastball just off the plate and low. Again, 90 miles an hour. So impressive looking arm coming in Graduate transfer Anthony Rodriguez. Again, he played at Maryville College. He comes out of Miramar, Florida, but he's a power left-hander, and he locates that fastball on the inside half, and that'll even the count at a ball and a strike on Borum. Starter Torbert, very, very effective through the seven innings he was out there. We mentioned two, two runs on five hits, and really gave the Bisons hitters a tough time. A lot of quick innings there, Cade, that we saw, one, two, three innings without a lot of chances to get deep in counts. Exactly. He's been able. He was able to control the whole game and be able to really just go at work at his pace. So, um, you know, great job for him and, and really just keep the Bison hitters off balance throughout the lineup. That miss downstairs and it's three and one on Tiger Borum now. The designated hitter Chris Bachelor waits on deck as Borum's able to re reach. Here comes the three one and that's going to miss off the plate and low ball four. So Borum on base for the second time today with a walk with two outs and that'll bring up Chris Bachelor. Chris, one of the few bright spots for the Bison's offense today. He's got two of their five base hits, courtesy of two singles. He singled back in the fourth and scored a run. He singled in the sixth as well. He also grounded out, so he's two for three on the day and three for seven on the weekend. So good day so far for Bachelor. Tough day for a lot of the other Bison hitters. We'll see if he can get something going here against Anthony Rodriguez with two outs. Swung on and hit in the air. First pitch swinging. That's going to go to right field. Norman's drifting over. He's camped out under it. And he's going to record the third out of the inning there. So not much doing for the Bisons. They do strand one more runner. They've only stranded four on the day. And we head to the ninth inning. Your score, Kennesaw State 13 and Lipscomb 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
We head to the top half of the ninth inning. Kennesaw State leading Lipscomb 13 to two. And the new pitcher on the mound for the Bisons is the freshman right-hander Patrick Williams, a 6'7", 199 pounder out of Cleveland, Tennessee, prepped at Cleveland High School. Hard throwing right-hander is on for his third appearance on the season. He's worked two and a third innings, given up four hits, three runs, three earned, walked three and struck out one. He did pitch on Tuesday night against Auburn in that game. And he comes out as the fourth Bisons pitcher of the day. Max Habiger started, went two and two thirds. Dylan Bierman followed with three excellent innings. Matthew Maldonado went two and a third. And then Williams is now on to try to hold this one where it is and give the Bisons a chance to come up and bat in the bottom of the ninth inning. And we do have a pinch hitter as well for the Kennesaw State Owls. This is number 26, Logan Fink. He's a redshirt freshman out of Kathleen, Georgia. Six foot three, 200 pounds. He'll be hitting in place of Skylar McPhee, the first baseman who's batted in this spot previously. And Williams starts him off with a fastball that's off the plate for ball one. Fink has appeared in six games, started four of them, 12 at bats on the season and has not recorded a hit yet. And he takes that one inside and high for ball two. So two balls and no strikes on Fink. Something I want to kind of harp on is the uh, Kennesaw State uh, hitting right now. Uh, they got 16 hits and 13 hits yesterday. Um, something you and I talked about was it looks like right now they're just not missing the fastball. And uh, when you don't miss a fastball, you, good things happen. Yeah, they've really done a good job swinging at fastballs throughout the day here. That one was hit foul. It's two balls and one strike. Patrick Williams pitching to Logan Fink. And nice off-speed pitch there. Had him fooled, and it's two and two. I think hitting for the first time today. He's on an, a pinch hitting roll. Some youngsters getting a chance to play here late in this ball game as Kennesaw State in command 13-2. And very nice off-speed pitch there. And Patrick Williams has a strikeout of the first man that he faces, Logan Fink. So one out in the inning. And it looks like we're going to have another pinch hitter. This is Nathan Gravitt. Gravitt, a six-foot-tall, 197-pound freshman out of Canton, Georgia. Listed as a catcher on the roster. And I see him as having one other appearance, two at-bats, no hits on the season. So Gravit will get an at-bat here in place of Coro. And he swings through a fastball there, nothing in one. I think if you're Lipscomb right here, you have to really try to focus on uh, taking the positive at the end of the game right here and, and really um, – you know, get ready and try to get some momentum for tomorrow with the rubber series coming. The 0 1 is a fastball that's going to miss downstairs, one ball and one strike. So Williams, a hard thrower. Mentioned he's got that four seam fastball. He's got a curve and a change and creates a lot of angles with that tall frame that he has. So a young man that the coaching staff is very high on and thinks have a very bright future here. Could see him starting in some of the midweek games as we go through the season. That's a slider that's going to catch the inside corner for a ball and two strikes. So Gravit is down one and two. Here comes the one two and he swings and misses that. It's in the dirt, gets behind Bertolani, but he's gonna pick it up and then he's gonna drop it. So you're gonna see Gravit reach on the dropped third strike. That'll go down in the books as a strikeout, but he's gonna reach with the drop third. And that'll turn it over to the top of the order. And Jesse Sherrill. Feels like he's batted about 11 times today, Cave, but it turns out that this is his sixth at bat. Exactly. Singled and scored a run in the first, hit by pitch and caught stealing in the second, grounded out in the fourth, singled and stranded in the sixth, and then flew out in the eighth. So he's had, as we mentioned, the day that you want to have out of the leadoff spot, putting pressure on, reaching base, adding with one out and a runner on first base, and that almost hit him. It came way inside, ball one. Exactly, and I think when you're Lipscomb, it's, it's really hard to, uh, and it looks like they counted that as an error, um, but it, it's hard when, you, when you're when you down by, you know, 11 runs to really keep that focus for the whole game. Off-speed pitch there, and he swung through it, and that's a ball and a strike. So Williams showing a really nice changeup. It could be, I think, Abe. Do you think that's a changeup or a slider that we're seeing off the hand there? I think it's really tough to tell. I can't really, uh, it looks like it's pronating out of his hand, so it could be a possible changeup. Um, but it's really hard to tell from up here in the stands. Whatever it is, it's been very effective, and it's a one ball, one strike count, and he swings, or comes inside, rather, and that's two and one. That looked like the fastball there that he came back with. So two balls, one strike, runner on at first. 
Ninth inning, Kennesaw State in command, 13-2 over Lipscomb. Game two of this three-game series. A reminder that game three will be here tomorrow at 1 p.m. as the rubber game between these two teams takes place. Here comes the 2-1. Swung on and hit high in the air behind home plate. Bertolani's got the mask off. He's looking at it. It's coming back, and he's going to glove it. Well, that one, oh, they did it say like they, it was on the transfer yep, right they gave there. it on the transfer. Yep, I thought he gloved it, and then he tried to transfer it, and it came out. So home plate umpire Butch Griffin says that's an out. I would think we wouldn't get an argument with the score being 13-2, to two. and that's going to be the second out of the inning and bring up Tolvi, the catcher. Tolvi also has had an excellent day. Singled and scored a run in the first, singled and scored a run in the third, popped out in the fourth, singled and was stranded in the sixth, and singled and scored a run in the eighth. So he's got four base hits on the day and three runs scored. And Mr. Tolvi's going to sleep well tonight after a busy day out there. He looks at that off-speed pitch low and away for a ball, one ball and no strikes. Again, same two teams here tomorrow, 1 p.m. start time. That, brought, that game is scheduled to be broadcast on ESPN+. Plus. Here comes the 1-0, and he swung hit that deep in the air to right center, or right field. That's going back. Graves still going back. Looks up and gone. Home run. He's having a heck of a game today, huh? Wow. All you can say is what a day for Tolvi. That is his fourth hit on the day, and that one got out of here. It was a line shot down to right field. And that's going to score two more. And that's going to extend that lead up to 15 to 2. So Tolvi got a hold of that one and hit it out. And it's 15 to 2. Two outs are still present. And that's going to bring up Carbio, I believe, is scheduled. And that does look like Carbio. Carbio. 17 hits for the day. Carbio batting for the sixth time. He's grounded out. He's reached on a walk. And he's grounded out. He's flied out. And he's grounded out. So he's, again, still looking for his first hit. Takes a big hack at that one. It doesn't get it. It's. No balls in one strike. Only time on base today was via the walk, and he did score during that particular at-bat. Came in hitting 351. Looks at a breaking ball downstairs. One ball and one strike on Alex Carbio. Yeah, as you mentioned, Kate, 17 hits on the day for this Kennesaw State hit, a team. 15 runs on 17 hits. They had 13 hits last night, so they have come into Nashville swinging the bat, and that's a fastball that catches the outside corner. Two balls, or a ball and two strikes, rather. Yeah, it looks like, uh, like I said, they aren't missing the fastball right now, and it looks like that home run was off another fastball. So uh, I think that's been one of their big approaches in the, the past few days is uh, really not missing the fastball and, and trying to exploit that. So I think Lipscomb's going to have to kind of reassess and see if, you know, that could be a possibility of really throwing a lot more breaking balls if whoever's throwing tomorrow can spot it. Three balls and one star, or actually, correction, two balls, two strikes is our count. Two outs. That's going to miss high, and that's going to run the count full on Carbio. Norman, the right fielder, who has a home run today, would be next. If Carbio is able to reach here. Here comes the payoff, and that's going to miss high ball four. So Carbio is on with a walk. And that will bring up Mr. Norman, who, again, has had a good day. He singled back in the first, flew out in the third and the fifth, hit that home run to the opposite field in the seventh, and reached on an error and scored a run in the eighth. So Norman bats now two outs, runner on at first. A couple of other schedule notes for the Bisons. On Tuesday night, they'll play over at Vanderbilt at a 6.30 start. That will, again, be on campus at Vanderbilt. And then next weekend, the Bisons are on the road with a three-game series at North Alabama. Slider misses inside ball one. The Friday game will be at 4 p.m., Saturday at 1 p.m., and Sunday game at noon. Again, that's three at North Alabama after the midweek game at Vanderbilt. One ball, no strikes. And he swings through the off-speed pitch there. Evens the count at a ball and a strike. Kennesaw State, meanwhile, will be at Georgia on Tuesday night in Athens. Wednesday they play Jacksonville State at Kennesaw at home, and then they've got a three-game series next weekend with Georgia State. Swung on and tapped off the plate. That'll be a ball and two strikes. That Georgia State series, actually four games. They're playing one on Friday, one on Saturday, one on Sunday, and one on Monday. So a four-game series non-conference with the Kennesaw State Owls next weekend with Georgia State. That's after playing... Tuesday at Georgia and Wednesday at Jacksonville State. So a busy weekend for the Owls. But, Kate, if they keep swinging it the way they did here, they may have some success. 
Exactly, and I think uh, if you're Patrick Williams right here, I think you're going to have to go with the breaking ball and see if you can beat Norman since he's been able to hit the fastball. He does, and he hits him with it because that one missed inside. So hit by the pitch is Norman, and he's going to be back on base again. That's the fourth time he's reached base today, and we're to the designated hitter, Hassan. Hassan has a, sack, a, uh, a safety squeeze for a run. He's singled, he's flied out, he's popped out, and he's single. So he's two for four on the day, scored a run and has an RBI. And he'll bat now with two men on, two outs. It is the top of the ninth inning, and Kennesaw State is leading Lipscomb 15 to two. Swung on and hit foul back to the screen. That was a fastball that was about three feet outside, but he just wanted to have a hack at that one, Kate. <laughs> He got the bat on it barely because it was in the middle of the other batter's box. Exactly. I think he's trying to get his reps in, uh, so to speak, over the next few pitches. I believe he had decided he was going to swing at that one before he stood in there because uh, that one was way outside. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. And that's a slider hit to Adams at second. He's going to flip to Moore at, f at the bag, and he's going to record the out. So they retire Hassan on the fielder's choice there. But Kennesaw State winds up putting up two more runs, and they've extended their lead to 15-2. to two. The Bisons come up to bat in the bottom of the ninth. Last go-round for Lipscomb. Again, your score, Kennesaw State 15 and Lipscomb 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Bisons. They're trailing Kennesaw State 15 to two, and we have a pinch hitter. Freshman Trey Ham is gonna bat in place of Carter Smith. Ham is a six foot one, 224 pound freshman out of Perry, Georgia. And he comes in batting 500 on the season. One hit in two trips, so his third at bat of the year. And he'd like to get in there and get some swings and see what the Bisons can do here against Anthony Rodriguez. Only the second pitcher of the day used by Kennesaw State. And Ham swings and hits that foul straight back, and it's nothing in one. Again, Luke Torbert, the starter, went the first seven innings, did an excellent job limiting the Bisons to just two runs on five hits. And then Anthony Rodriguez came in and pitched an excellent inning in the eighth, and he's back for his second inning of work. So here comes the 0-1. That's a fastball going to miss low, and it'll be a ball and a strike on Ham. It looks like right now that the uh, the Bisons are going to try to get as many people reps as possible in the next few swings. Off-speed pitch there, and he swung through it. It's a ball and two strikes. So you got to be impressed with Rodriguez, Kate. He's come on as a lefty. Fastball's been 89 to 90, but he's shown the ability to shown the ability to throw that change up for consistent strikes and really keep the hitters off balance. Exactly, and I think he's done exactly what he's supposed to do, coming in and throwing strikes and uh, really following a great performance by Torbett. So. Um, you know, he's done a great job. Two balls, two strikes on Trey Ham, pitch hitter at bat here, and he swings through that one for strike three. That was a fastball that was cutting away from him. Looks like it kind of had a little fade action on it, and then Ham goes down swinging. And we're going to have a pinch hitter here. This is August Haymaker, 5'11", 196-pound sophomore, transfer from St. John's River Community College. He is from Orlando, Florida. He's got five at-bats on the season, still looking for his first hit. So Haymaker is going to stand in there and bat for Maddox Houghton. Fastball is going to miss low and inside for ball one. 
So Haymaker batting against Rodriguez. No one out, no base is empty. Bottom of the ninth, tap towards third. Patel is up with it and throws to first and gets the out. He was in as a defensive substitution. Patel at third, and he threw over to Fink, who's at first base. So new players on both ends of that play, but the result is the same. Haymaker is retired on that ground out, and the Bisons are down to their last out of the day. And it looks like this is going to be Drew Donathan is going to get an at-bat. Drew is a... Six foot one, 205 pound sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina. He's a transfer from Clemson. And I believe this will be Drew's first at bat of the season, Kate. First time as we've seen him swing in a Bison's uniform. So Donathan batting here for Bertolani as the Bison's, as you mentioned, trying to get some experience with some guys in the lineup. Exactly. I think they're really just trying to build any sort of momentum that they can get for tomorrow and, and really just go for the rubber match. And uh, it's going to be an interesting one to see, to say the least. That's a fastball that's going to stay inside. It'll be ball one to Drew Donathan. Again, these same two teams here tomorrow, 1 p.m. start time on ESPN+. Plus. Swung on and foul back to the screen, and that'll be a ball and a strike on Donathan. Our next YouTube broadcast should be here on Tuesday, March the 30th. The Bisons host Austin P in a 6 p.m. game. But always keep your eye on LipscombSports.com. That's hammered down the left field line. That's going to get all the way to the wall for a double. You're going to see Donathan make the turn and get into second base with a stand-up double. So for his first at-bat as a Bison, Drew Donathan has a double. I'd say that's a pretty good way to start off your career right there, huh? He really hammered that one, sat on that fastball and hit it way out there. And we're going to have another pinch hitter here I believe this is number 13 Looks like Graves oh no that's a uh, correction that is still David Graves I didn't see the number correctly so Graves bats for the fourth time of the day he's 0 for 3 he's struck out twice and then hard luck last time he lined the ball to third base that was gloved by Coro and so he's 0 for 3 on the day so he'll bat with two outs and a runner on at second 15 to 2 Kennesaw State in command and swung on and hit in the air to left field Hodges is going to take a couple steps in still coming in he gloves it and that's your ball game right there as David Graves is retired on the fly ball out to left field. So your final score is Kennesaw State 15 and Lipscomb 2. We'll give you the final line score on today's game. For the Kennesaw State Owls, they put up 15 runs on 17 hits. They had no errors. And I have them here, Cade, as leaving... Five runners on base for the Lipscomb Bisons. Two runs on just six hits. They end up committing four errors, and they left four men on base for today's activity. The winning pitcher will be Luke Torbert, and he's going to take his record to 2-1 and one on the season. And I believe the loss will go to the starter, Max Habiger. Habiger will fall to 1-2 and two on the season. Time of the game is going to be two hours and 44 minutes. And just to recap the action, things got underway quickly for the Kennesaw State Owls. They put up two runs in the first inning, courtesy of three base hits and a uh, safety squeeze. They added another run back in the second inning as, again, uh, they had another base hit and moved a runner around with a couple of ground outs. The third inning allowed Kennesaw State to put two more runs on the board, again, courtesy of a couple of base hits. They were held scoreless in the fourth and the fifth inning. And then two more runs added in the sixth inning by Kennesaw State. Um, a couple of base hits, a fielder's choice, and an error in that inning. In the seventh inning, they used a solo home run to add one more. And then they had a big eighth inning as the Owls put up five runs in that inning. In that inning alone, they managed to put five base hits together. And then they kept attacking in the ninth inning, adding one more on a solo home run as well. Lipscomb was quiet except for the fourth inning. That was the only inning they were able to get some offense going. It started with a walk to Tiger Borum. Chris Bachelor followed with a... A single, Carter Smith was retired on a fly out, and then Maddox Houghton uh, singled. Uh, ultimately, however, he was caught stealing, and, Drew and uh, Chaz Bertolani singled. But the threat was ended with a strikeout, and so the Bisons had to settle for two runs in that inning. So Kennesaw State winds up scoring in seven of their nine at-bats. They scored in every inning except for the fourth and fifth. The Bisons only able to put up a pair of runs in the fourth inning, and Kennesaw State wins this one 15-2. Reminder for fans that the next action for Lipscomb Baseball will be tomorrow, March 21st, when the Bisons will play the third game of this series against Kennesaw State. First pitch is scheduled for 1 p.m. 
Once again, the telecast on that one will be on ESPN+. Plus. Our special thanks to Lipscomb Athletic Director Philip Hutchison, Associate Athletic Director Brent McMillan, the Director of Sports Communication Kirk Down. this time and till next time so long you've been watching Lipscomb Bison's baseball on YouTube live